Oh, and there go the kids. Peace, family. Thank everybody for joining in tonight. Pardon that we are behind schedule, but we have everybody set here. We have a blank square, but it's coming. There we go. We have Marku, and we have Raw, and we have Abdullah Kafre, Astrology Minds, all astrological students, as well as uh, Cosmophysics enthusiasts, students. What, what am I saying here? How do I do that live, right? <laughs> How do I say that we're all students of Cosmophysics? Of course, with the grand one there, Ra'aku. And we are going to get started today to talk about, or this evening, to talk about basically wherever the transits take us, what we're experiencing as a whole for... Um, for the 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 whole as a community or even individually because you could take these lessons and apply them to yourself so wherever the charts take us uh we'll go ahead and start there whoever wants to go first you are more than welcome to jump in with whatever's pressing and we'll uh take it from there thank you also by the way for all of you being here peace <laughs> You'll start. start. Can I start? Go, of, co of course you can. You raised your hand. <laughs> okay. First of all, I want to say that I love you and I love all of you for being a part of this collective moment for as we all grow better and as we all go further into ourselves, as we love ourselves, we must love all of those who commune with us in the journey. So I love you all and I thank you for allowing me to be a part of a conversation with such legendary individuals. I feel honored. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm Abdullah Kafre. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Nesu BT Kafre, Lords of the Pivot. And I just, I'm very, I'm very honored to be a part of the movement and um, to be able to share presence with you guys. Well, peace. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. Feelings mutual. Yeah. And Mark Koo, we see you over there getting, you're getting pumped up, right? You're doing your exercise stuff so that you could. Oh, you yeah. Could throw I'm, down. I gotta stay moving. I got the sun in the fifth. I got to, you know, move around. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, our stoic Ra'aku, Cosmo361. Love the background, by the way. That's hot. Can you hear me? Nope. <laughs> well, anyway, as it were, if we want to talk about what's occurring, I know that everyone is really, as always, very interested in the um, approaching <laughs> Jupiter-Saturn conjunction especially with elections and the way that everything's going. I know that I talk about this quite a lot on my podcast about what's going on politically because that seems to affect how everyone is behaving, whether they're getting their money or things are getting shut down or there are laws being implemented for the, for the you know, the thing that's floating around where we're masking up. I don't want to say it just in case they ding us on, on YouTube, <laughs> right? Because you know how they can get down. A certificate of Virus Identification 19. Yeah, yeah, that right there. <laughs> which uh, get a vaccine is what it is. Yeah. Which amazingly, you know, when you bring that up, um, one of the things that is like, for example, in my own personal life, me getting back into the film industry, which is a Neptune thing, and okay, having to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. I thought Abdullah was going. Oh yeah, I thought Abdullah you know, was I'm going. Just, I'm just ringing. <laughs> Go ahead, continue, because you you done got it started now. So. Okay. Yeah, well, I was saying that, you know, I'm in, in my own personal life, you know, I got invited to go ahead and basically reattend um, the film industry, which, of course, is a Neptune thing. But they're really that Neptune is connected to also the, the certificate that you mentioned earlier. And they're also using that as a process in order for you to continue, which kind of terrifies me, M mind you. That's also the thing. So this whole Pisces Neptune theme with that, that I am cautious about wanting to reenter because, you know, it, and it's not just one time. They want to do these tests multiple times, even before you arrive on set. And to imagine having to do that for every time I'd have to go would be, no, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? So that's why I talk about what's going on um, na nationally on a community level because that's something I want to do. Do you see what I'm saying? I want to be in that industry. But because of the things that are going on politically and with the government, with health, it's making me change the way that I have to behave or move or um, conduct myself in that arena. 
So I know that what is happening on the grand scale trickles down to affect us down here on the lower scale. So that I know you all have insights as to how these things are affecting the individual where they think it's just about them. You know, they think that these signs, but if they don't go to see how they have to now maneuver because of what's affecting them above them, um, that it makes it quite difficult to decipher or discern what direction people should really go in. So I don't know if I've actually said anything that um, you guys can actually Saturn, lead off on. Saturn, the planet Saturn, and its symbolism manifest manifest very strongly. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Manifest yes. very strongly around the return year for every human being. So you have to think about everyone that was born while Saturn was at the end of Capricorn, the beginning of Aquarius. When it went into Aquarius, all of this social distancing, um, depriving the people of their freedoms again, like they did in 9-11 with this mask shit, using the mask as a segue to get you registered into their system, into their database, their people database, right? And a part of the system, an active cog in the, in, in, in the mechanics of the system as a result. This is the, uh, generationally told by those, the charts of 28, 29, 30, 31, 32 year olds, basically, mm. because this, and you know, at the beginning of this, uh, semi-quarantine or social distancing poli policy um blue pill called me and asked me to uh elaborate on the duration of the lockdown and things of this nature and at the time i hadn't gathered enough information on covid and the other transits it was you know a spontaneous question, but it, it was a worthy one, right? Mm -hmm. He said, how long? Um, I said, well, the measure is three degrees, very close to three degrees between the opposition to Mars when they first locked down the, uh, the country. So um, I said three degrees is three days, three months, or three years, and I haven't looked at the situation in its historical context um, yet in order to figure out what that three, that unit of three represents. Well, it's been more than three months. It's definitely been more than three days. So I'm, I'm going with the three year, uh, it's in close to three years. So things aren't gonna get back to normal because of this. Now, you see, even if they said tomorrow, you can, we're not going to bother you about not having a mask, you know, if they just bump that out the way, you understand? They, they was this program to control people, to restrict people, to restrict their freedom, and to, um, believe me, it's going to end to this Saturn and Aquarius with all kinds of internet regulation, mm -hmm. you know? So don't even think that it's just about social distancing. It's it's about control. I mean, Ray Charles can see that with his naked eyes. All right. And the uh, you know it's about control because like all of these countries that have alliances in the UN or that they have similar programming uh in terms of population control, they all jumped on it even before it was pronounced a threat or verified a deadly threat. You understand? Right. And, you know, it's all engineered. The, the, that is told by the sign of Aquarius and Saturn is home there. Okay? Which doesn't mean that Saturn turns into a flower child simply because he enters a sign that he's the ruler of. What yeah. it's like is, I'm at home, I can do whatever the fuck I want. See? Ain't that the truth, so, goddamn. So Saturn going into Aquarius in the beginning gives us all of the undesirables with regards to that configuration and alignment or transit and station because 
it improves as it goes along. You know, it has to grow. You have to get used to it. You have to find ways to get around it. And you have to stand firm, saddened on your freedoms. And the people aren't doing that, man. And mm-hmm. and you and let me tell you, this this uh social network, this these these sites run by Facebook and other third party government <laughs> agents, right? You you everybody on the planet is aware of these social groups, whether they're a member of it or not. You know, everybody that has internet in every country they're down with it. You understand? So they you know, you look at the numbers are staggering how many people are involved in this social media shit. So the Saturn and Aquarius generation, Mm. this is for them. Right. This is for them. And their return is coming up. Their yeah, their charts show the state of affairs, much like if you look, if you know astrology and the symbolism and can read, you look at the Pluto Orano station and Virgo in opposition to Saturn in my natality. So for those people born in the late sixties, early seventies, these were the generation who were most affected by that event, the nine eleven event. And not, and it is told that Saturn opposed Pluto, Saturn and Pisces opposed Pluto, you see? And um this whole control mechanism, the how the, how those social sites fit into that is most of the people are involved in a social site on the line. And you got these companies that own these apps and run these apps telling you what to do and what you can't do. Mm -hmm. That's conditioning right there. You gotta Mm -hmm. follow our rules. You can't post anything that goes against our political agenda. Okay? Now, if you're spending a lot of time on social media, then you are constantly in a situation of regulation. So Mm -hmm. when the government comes out and says, you have to put a mask on, most of the people are going to go for that because why? They're already made compliant by what they think to be reg- superior regulating forces by membership in these social sites. Well, there's also no way, I don't know, with Saturn also being the things that control us, it's also the necessities as well. And with the way the whole age of Aquarius is going, um, the necessity of social media, the necessity of the internet, they have actually slowly, you know, navigated all of us to having to conduct our businesses online, having to conduct our business with technology. I mean, there was a, people don't even know that in the 90s, if they don't remember or they weren't hip to it, that when the whole dot-com bubble and the whole internet rise and computers, there were, of course, the old school who were totally against I don't want computers in my company. I don't want to have to deal with that. I want to write letters and I want I want to do it the long way like we've always done it. And eventually they had no choice. Either they had to convert their businesses over to using some kind of technology. Instead, it wasn't the old school cash registers anymore. It was punching in on a computer that decided how much change you got back. Um, if they didn't go that way, they were pushed out. They were squeezed out. Their companies failed or they had to give it up. Or like I said, they just had to bite the bullet and turn their companies more technological. That's so- That's another Pluto Oranos generation stigma mm-hmm. or uh, uh, issue, you know, for lack of a better word at this point in my mental processes. The computerization of the work field, Oranos mm-hmm. and Virgo, and that yeah. permanent transformation. I went through that. I'm an illustrator, okay? And it went from, yeah, you can paint. Yeah, you can draw. Oh, you can sculpt. Well, now we got 3D printing. We got 3D sculpture. We got graphic 3D. We got everything computerized. So everything went from a portfolio to a MacBook, from a literal carrying a four by five foot briefcase filled with artwork heavy as hell to okay. it's all on jpegs and pngs okay it's all done with 
uh, Corel draw or um, Corel draw or um, like Procreate and Photoshop. 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 Yeah. yeah. Now let me yeah. finish, okay? Before you cut in, the this is still the Pluto, Uranus, Sinai that started in October of 1965. Because it was just the year before last, a little bit more than that, almost two years, that Pluto was square around us when all this rigmarole started. So the beginning of the Synod in 65 marked the generation born under or in the beginning of this Synod with the transformative uh, things went from manual labor to machine labor, Ford, all these big companies all of the filing systems, the libraries, all of that. You see that? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now that that square has just recently occurred, it brings the issue of human rights to the head again, as it did at the conjunction when civil rights and in Africa when they were pushing the European out, okay? Back in the 60s, decolonizing and things of this nature. So here we go again now, the human rights, Aquarius, are being challenged by the governing body with restriction, all Saturn, right? To again at the square, and you know that this is a a, a one hundred and thirty five year synod between one ten and one thirty five. So let's just put it at uh, one twenty five, basically one one twenty two something years. All right. So we're only a quarter of the way through it. If it's gonna get worse for those children born in in these times where Saturn is going ingressing into Aquarius, giving the same thing to the generation being born over the next few months and the next few years, that the 28, 29, and 30-year-olds, really 29, 30, uh, 31, 32-year-olds are having because it's going to be a minute, what, January before Saturn enters Aquarius, okay? So this Pluto cycle, Pluto is a planet that gives us indication of irrevocable change. Mm. Okay? So she, mm -hmm. it, it, this is going to be a drastic Pluto, extreme Pluto, uh, unexpected change on the populace Oranos. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the other things coming out for in the side, like the the child molestation, has everything to do with Pluto and Capricorn, because the eighth house of Capricorn is 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 uh Leo. So there's only uh two signs of the zodiac, really three. Okay, pardon me, three signs of the zodiac that give us indication of child molestation, maybe four. Mm. You know, Scorp Scorpio in the fifth, Leo in the eighth. Uh, Leo in the 12th, you understand? These things, so <laughs> notice how I said the signs on the cusp as opposed to the sign that's in focus because I don't want people to respond. Well, I'm mad and I don't do this. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, really, we're not talking about uh, people personally, shit. right? Yeah, we're talking about the, the, high, the symbolism and, right. and where the message is to be found and what signs. So, you know, that's Capricorn and Cancer. The uh, Capricorn has Leo in the eighth, Cancer has Scorpio in the fifth, Virgo has Leo in the twelfth, okay, and and um, Scorpio has Pisces in the fifth. So there goes the four indications of, of bedroom pleasure with children as far as sign cusp combination is concerned. We're not even mm. talking about the planets, okay? So when we when we this is one more than one way to say something astrologically, so right? It's not one way to say any one thing. There's a couple ways. To say that one thing. This is how you get a uh, uh, continual repetition of legacy or uh, stigma in, in, in generations. You see? Uh, for example, I got Pluto conjunct Uranus. Well, the, the whole generation born with Uranus in Scorpio have similar vibratory frequency and access to those mental functions and human experiences that those two planets represent by virtue of the fact that Uranus is in Pluto's sign. The delineation becomes highly similar, okay? So the, 
when, we, when I'm saying all of that to say that when you look at this generationally, you know, normal normally the, the, the mainstream astrologer is looking at the transits and what's going on um, in the interim between, I mean, in the interim um, action between the birth chart stations and the transits. They don't, they very rarely, okay, it, it takes quite an astrologer with some experience really to look at what's going on now and consider the charts of the generation that is most affected by the trends that are affecting society right now. That's what I do. You know, I understand that the natal promise means that planets you have in aspect, any aspect in the birth chart are triggered by the transits and the progressions when those same self same planets reach a tighter or make a new aspect, okay? And specifically, the synods that involve the outer planets because it affects us not only personally, but generationally. So Saturn is the limiter. He's the last planet. He's personal and generational, okay? So when when Saturn comes back around to Aquarius, we're going to see the full effects of the restrictions that they initiated under this motion. Now, I'm going to let y'all have some words here. <laughs> well, I know that Abdullah wanted to earlier um, interject in what you were saying, if you remember that thought. You know, it's crazy, man, the way my brain works, bro. I be remembering way too many of my thoughts. So, yeah, um, you know, it's crazy because I was just thinking in my head, man. I was just like, I was volleying. And I'm just like, oh shit, let me take some notes. <laughs> <laughs> right, you come on here to talk and then you I'm be like, like okay, no, I'm in class. I'm, I'm taking notes, I'm like, yeah, three degrees, bro. That's how you calculated that one, all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so no, so just even just understanding, you know, when I had light bulbs, you know, that's how I can maintain my place in the, in the dialogue, right? Um, where uh, he spoke about uh, Saturn, you know, and how he got an exact, uh, uh, not Saturn, uh, Saturn in Uranus, or Saturn in Aquarius, and he spoke about how he got an exact relationship to create a measurement for how long we would have this COVID experience. Whereas like me, in my, in my mind, I'm like Saturn entering Aquarius, Saturn, limitations, restriction, Aquarius, the people, two and a half year cycle, I'm telling people three years, just off of the strength of Saturn cycles. So oh, like, okay, yeah. let me tell you where I got the three years from. I'm implementing the horrory for the, the, uh, the announcement of the lockdown. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, then there was uh, the announcement of the lockdown and the killing of um, what's the guy's name who has a George terrible Floyd. Rap? George Floyd, right? Yeah. He has a bad rap, but his yeah. killing and everything that extended from that. I did the chart for for when the riots started, basically. Right, right. And right. Mars was in opposition either to the sun, I don't remember exactly because I don't have the chart in front of me, right? But at any rate, there was a um, a three degree, roughly three degree, just over three degrees in a few minutes, opposition to Mars. Mm -hmm. So, and um, that three degrees let me know how long the, the, there was going to be violence and insecurity and things that Mars represent going on between the ruler and the rule. Okay. Yeah. You know, basically they the media has such a lock, okay, on the minds of the populace that, that you know, people actually comply with that face mask bullshit when you could smoke a joint or a cigarette and blow the smoke through the mask and see exactly how well you are keeping yourself to yourself. You know, keeping yeah. your keeping your pathogens and your dirt to yourself. You're not. Absolutely not. So it's like breathing through a t-shirt, thinking that you know you're not gonna smell the fumes. Oh, they'll you let know? you walk into a store with your with a shirt wrapped around your face. So, yeah, as yeah, long as it looks covered. Thing. It's basically yeah. it, as long as it appears. You to know, be I liken it, I liken it to the fact that, you know, um, you keep horses inside by putting a fence around, like they can't jump over it. You know, I think that that right there, you know, even when Kanye West, you know, uh, you know, said slavery was a choice or or when in uh, or in Django, when um, uh, Monsieur Candy was talking about the, the things on the back of the skull and, you know, why none of these, you know, why he was shaving his father's head and why these slaves never just thought, why don't I just cut their, their throat? 
know what I'm saying? Programming. You know what I'm saying? Programming. No, nah, you can believe them slaves thought that shit. And they, they just, what? they probably put a lock on those that no, no, actually the, did. You know, we don't hear the, about all that. The, all the, all the, yeah, we don't hear about that. All of the yeah. passive slave stories, man. Humanity doesn't change. You we, you still maintain your sense of humanity. And there are four qualities in the human being that supersede everything regardless of intellectual level. Okay, it isn't even up for debate, so I'm going to rely to relay them and convey them to you now. There's the desire to reproduce. Mm -hmm. Okay, to enjoy sexual pleasure of some sort. Human beings ain't giving that shit up. Right. Okay. Right. Not collectively enough for it to, for 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 it if it was taken away, there'd be certain mayhem and you know madness and mayhem. Right. The the human appetite, you know, the desire to eat and the desire to have nice things. Just look at communist Russia and and China. There there are people that got shit. Right. Over there in them countries which they ain't supposed to have. And they cherish that shit, okay? Right. And then then you have uh, the desire to be free as well as a part of the collective. See, nobody wants right. to wake up tomorrow and be and the, be only, the only human being on the planet. Right. And the freedom comes with that. I want to be a member of humanity and I want my freedom, okay? Then... There is autonomy and the love for family. You see, so these things right here are what propel people to go to war. These are astrologically given indication by the four fixed signs of the zodiac Taurus, the desire to eat and have shit, Scorpio, the desire to fuck and to grow and to evolve. The um, Leo is autonomy, and Aquarius is the freedom, you know, to interact, to assemble, to move, to be a part of, to de to detach even yourself from the authority. You see, these these things in human nature will never change. Thus, you had runaway runaway slaves. Re you we had mad slave rebellion. So the Hollywood and the history books and this government pushed the idea that the slaves were so passive they never had a revolt. There were more than a hundred revolts in 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 the eighteen hundreds alone. Now, 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 in, in in my rhetoric, in no way, shape, or form, am I am I negating the rebelliousness of um of the slave shit? I'm Jamaican. I've done plenty of research on the um the uh the maroon camps in Jamaica you know and the Amistad, yeah. And the, and the languages that they spoke and how they engaged in their in their ritualistic practices. So yeah, no, I know that for a fact. But the passive slaves did have a sense of programming. Granted, we don't hear about the rebellious ones because they don't want to teach you about rebellious uh, slaves, obviously, because then you'd quit your job, right? But you feel me? The ones who were passive, the reason that something like that could happen is, is the nature of, of, of brainwashing, the nature of thinking that something is going to be or thinking that something is a necessity. You know what I'm saying? If you think that, then you will act in accordance. You feel me? Granted, everybody thought that way, but there was there was people who were susceptible to brainwash. Same way there are people who wear masks out. Yeah, I, got, yeah I can interject in, in, a, in a, a concurrence with that idea. The brainwashable folks, but this is who, who receives the, even they, if you threaten their food, their pleasure, their freedom, their autonomy, for certain, they're going to step out of that. Moment. You can manipulate them with those things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the scarcity tactic, you know, yeah, you're going to run out do. of this or you see, won't be able to. See, the, the, the thing about it is, uh, I mean, speaking in terms of, of the revolutionary mindset, you know, um, <laughs> person has to be willing to sacrifice. At present, the collective of oppressed people globally, globally right. are more slaves to their senses than the very system itself. And the system uses that, their sense of uh, perception and pleasurable experience like a banana in their face. You, you, as long as I can eat and feed my kids, 
I'm going to be slow to grab my pistol and go out there and bust some police in the head and the face, okay? I mean, this is just the mentality. I can eat. Uh, I'm comfortable. I'm not. It's to the point where I feel like those four elements of humanity are actually being challenged. And because of that, they're able to manipulate. Now, the the manipulation is looked at from, from Scorpio to Pluto to the eighth place, okay? And uh, certain types of manipulation, certain other planetary energies are used to actually actuate the manipulation, okay? So they use Venus, they use our food, they use uh, Neptune, things that we're addicted to. They use entertainment, the sun. So, you know, we can't just say that one planet is the indicator of every form of manipulation that they use. But speaking right. collectively, the uh, manipulation is Pluto. It is Scorpio when you talk about manipulation, you see. Everything else is a tool for it. Right. Okay. So ruling people is not a new science. <clears throat> right. I mean, back in the very ancient days, I'm talking about dynasties. They knew that certain policy captured the imagination of folks and certain um, action and ritual also fascinated them and they use this to rule and do not think for one minute that they have not been studying that relationship between the ruled and the ruler and how it's placated and how it's exercised right see you know people tend to believe that men in the 1700s and 1800s european african or whatever the fuck right the day because live back then and we're not as electronically as technological as we are that they are less intelligent, man. They had more time to ponder the mysteries of the universe, more time to experiment, more time to apply their uh, intellectual exercises and um, activities that, that, that enhance it. Don't sleep, man. And you know, to piggyback off of that, I've been having that conversation a lot lately because everybody is working on creating businesses and things like that. And I say one of the biggest one of the biggest setbacks to people not understanding the nature of business is not understanding marketing and how it functions. You know what I'm saying? Marketing literally is taking complete advantage of the things that your brain does that you are not aware. You mean the fact that Burger King, Wendy's, and McDonald's all have red and yellow signs. You feel me? It's such an important aspect of our psychology. Why do I feel like A.A. Rashid is sitting in this conversation? <laughs> well, I understand that <laughs> that's uh, the color psychology. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. the real shit. It's yeah, real. and it works. People think it's like about, it doesn't about, work. You know, and that's why and that's why I love the two schools that I engage in, whereas Ra'aku is actually measuring the reality as it exists physically. Mm -hmm. And A. Rashid is taking that measurement and saying, well, this is how we interpret it as individuals based off of our nuances and our trauma and our personal experiences. So it's perfect. It's, this is the real world and this is the real world to you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like both of them are, you know what I'm saying, crystallizing um, the as above and so below perfect opposite directions. And You know, I just did hey, a study um, recently. Well, it was just a quick study, but the, on the fact of manipulation and what the news reports and, and how we are manipulated, we think that we don't succumb to these influences, but we do. And one of the things I ended up realizing is that every major news story has a Saturn aspect. They choose the most Saturn of things to report. Um, like, for example, when the pit bull controversy was going on, and that was like the number one thing everyone was talking about, dogs biting people and the brutality for pets and animals. And Saturn was in Virgo, uh, transiting during the time that the news was reporting this. When they were reporting um, the basic news about, I believe, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire shooting for home runs back in the 90s, early, you know, mid 90s, and, and Bill Clinton getting dome in the Oval Office, uh, Saturn was transiting Aries. Uh, so having to do with sports, right? And this is what the the main news stories were when it came to same sex marriages and the death of Gaddafi and governments being changed and terrorists. Saturn was in Libra. So when people are looking at the news, you can expect that their number one top stories are always going to, or typically, from what I've seen, have a Saturnian nature to it, which is why they say it's so depressing to watch the news. Why you hear nothing but bad things. They all the energies that they choose, they find the most Saturn thing they can, um, and they they publicize that. Okay, I wanted to go back to uh, that is true that you know bad news sells 
you know, nothing gathers the attention of the people like tragedy. Okay, and controversy, competition, controversy, whatever. You know, no, you know, people get jealous when they announce so and so hit the lotto today for sixty four thousand dollars, and this guy over here learned the secret of how to crack the uh, uh, stock market. They don't broadcast good news. So, uh, yeah, and if they did, the people are so conditioned to to hate, self, right. To, to hate, right? Basically, <laughs> or they just hate, right? To 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 to, to be negative, to be negative at someone else's advancement. Mm-hmm. That it would not suit it. Like this Kali Yuga is for real, okay? So the people that morally collect on a collective level, there's not going to be a high standard moral. You know, and as and because I've been here for 54 years, I can look at the last 40 years and see how they run that Jupiter Saturn conjunction cycle on your ass. Right. On our asses, on everybody in the world. Okay. Right, right, right. Like when they release the drugs, like every 20 years is a serious, but every every seven years they're constantly dropping. So every 20 years, there's three different type of drug trends. You see what I'm saying? And and then they make that they make this drug illegal, okay? And they make it very available to the people in the areas that they want to gentrify. And then and then they get to the point where they locked up all the men, they subjected all the women, and there are all 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 the children are running amok. Okay? And they try to keep us in this state. You know, a lot of people don't like this. This is how this country, this is the state it was in when them Europeans got here. Mm. Okay. So, oh yeah, the inner tribes were already fighting yeah, they for already, control already and fighting, fighting and, right. and yeah. So to, to you know Cherokee against Apache, right. uh, Blackfeet against you. Know, so the the there was no entire unity on this continent before they got here. We had already, like Bobby uh, Hemmings said, we had for thousands of years we had already fell off. You romanticized the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, and you know, people don't like that shit when when I bring it up. But you know, Indians were scouts for these Europeans in exchange for you help us with our enemies. That tribe over there mm-hmm. will help you with your enemies, man. You look at the French and Indian War, okay? So you you understand that this legacy isn't brand new, right? This uh, racist, uh, uh, racism, and all of this push to the floor to keep the people divided is nothing new. They've been doing this since they got off the boat. They're not even, Europeans aren't even 100% unified, man. French compete with the English, the Germans compete with the Swiss. So, you know, when, when people say, yeah, we need to unify. That we don't need to unify. Not realistically. We need to find a place where we can agree. <laughs> right, okay? right, right, right. Because right. we're not going to be of the same religion. We're not going to, everybody isn't going to wake up tomorrow and embrace consciousness, ego consciousness. Okay. Like that? That's right quick? really. Pardon? Can I interject that quick? Yeah. Just so interesting to hear you say that as we talk about the civil rights movement and those similar, and you just said how Malcolm X introduced the ballad of the bullet speech. You know what I'm saying? Lay down your religion. This is not the time to have that conversation. We are all here as black people. You know, it's just like, it's just so interesting to hear the rhetoric even resurface well, in a similar well, what's deep is, is necessary because <laughs> we hear that shit and we like to entertain our egos with it. Like we like to memorize fucking King's lists and learn how to read hieroglyphs yeah. and, and walk around with our chest poked out because we understand something about the distant past that other people haven't taken the time out to apply. But I just need to know how that shit is putting food on your table, how that shit is raising your kids. You see what I'm saying? Nobody's going to put down Christianity Specifically, those Christians that feel like they could go to the church and get help right. from a from a community base 
when they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, it is a, a, a very far, uh, it is very distant. There's a lot that needs to be done before you can get the people to a point where they're willing to wake up together. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So if you understand that, then it's not going to be anytime soon. There's one thing that has unif that unifies the entire world. I, I named them in the beginning. We all want to be free. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all want to be autonomous. Okay. We all want to eat and we all want to have the carnal fun. We all want to live and grow too and multiply or do the things that allow us to multiply, whether we multiply with it or not. Right. So, the, these things right here have to really come in a threat. As long as those needs are being met, they can get away with the mutable and the cardinal shit. Keep switching up on you, cardinal. Keep keep keeping constant routine or uh, uh, discomfort. <coughs> you know, and the ignorance is beyond me. You know, it's like uh, this is necessary for the growth and development of us as a, a, a species, so be it. But there, when we look at the pattern of events, let's say over the centuries, okay, that it, it has not gotten any better. Yeah. They tell you because they have a select few, a select circle of people that get in, whether they force their way in or are initiated into the inner circle. Still, the majority of people globally globally are outside of that circle. And keeping them outside that circle is all about appeasing their senses. So it isn't a really a matter of we all need to unify. People need to come back from the degenerative state that we are degenerate. If I can interject, if I can interject, I think it's a matter of security because I think it is because people are insecure and in the fact that the, the idea of belief means that you are ignorant of the fact. So to have a belief or to have a belief system is to express your ignorance. And I think people are insecure that in their ignorant need to believe something, which is absolutely fine, there grows an insecurity of, of their inability to share that. You feel me? So the validation of its truth is that I can convince you of it, even though it's not real, it's a belief. So I think my only issue with anybody that, and I think this is what Malcolm X's ultimate goal was, is to say that I don't really, really care about your religion because if it makes you a better person, then that's all that matters. Don't make any of these conversations about your demographic and how y'all feel personally, right? We all are lacking food. So it's not about the Christians or the Muslims lacking food. It's about us as people lacking food, you know what I'm saying? So I understand that concept of, of, of unification, but I think that the biggest thing with religious individuals and why that tends to be a barrier is because most religious individuals are insecure and that is why they require um, religious endeavors in order to maintain that security. And that right there is hard to be accountable and, and accept your experience and be able to indulge somebody else's without having a debate just about which one's right. Well, I'm gonna tell you at the end of the day, it's about eating. Right. Yeah. It's when, as long as they can eat, it's just like your dog. Your dog will never turn on you because you feed it. And though there are species of dogs that will turn on you regardless, okay, we're talking about, for the most part, you feed your dog, he's going to be grateful. As long as he can eat, there's no ferociousness in him. He's not hungry. You see? And it's the same way when... The game was running back in the 80s and the 90s. You know, all your men was eating with you. It was the hungry ones that did the foul shit to you. Okay? So it is the same here. The agenda to fully control, own, and administrate every square inch of livable land has not ceased one bit, man, since the Punic wars so when, when we sit up here talking about the police violence and the C christopher columbus's uh, colonialism and the crusades and you want to talk about all that you have to even go back to where it initiated it first started it were first reached a, it first reached a serious climax and 
as far back as I can go is the Punic Wars. Fight over the Mediterranean between European, African, and Asian powers. Man. Well, you know what I see with this, even discussing, you know, how control has never gone anywhere. These type of fights have always been going on. Is the fact that as a community, I'm talking about the disenfranchisement of the original people. Of right, the land, and that that past. What I see, just as we've mentioned before, is nothing that anybody can do anything about. We can't rewind time to change what's trickled down throughout these thousands of years. No, and, but you can put a raincoat on and stop getting wet. You, you, well, it, it all not, happens it's, for the sake of growth. I'm it's, stop yeah, it. no, no, it, no, it's definitely for the sake of growth, but we're still stuck in a fact or a mentality that we are thinking about and not to invalidate anyone's feeling, but woe is me. For example, right now, the hurricanes are smashing into Louisiana. Peace and thoughts to everybody out there. There have been like 500,000 homes lost. And it, I mean, it's terrible. It's not even be, really being blasted on the news as to what they're going through. The, that whole Gulf area is being just obliterated. And my issue is, is that I feel for those people. It's just like astrology when you know that these transits are coming around, that you can't stop it, but you can better prepare for it, right? They get money to rebuild. Where do they go? Right back to where it was obliterated. Two, three years later, same cycle comes again. Their homes get wiped out. They get paid to rebuild. Where do they go? Right fucking back to where it was obliterated. When there is, if you just go north, Wyoming, South Dakota, these, these mental um, psychological barriers, this, this programming to prevent us from expanding, from moving, from learning. Wyoming, South Dakota, North Dakota, New Mexico, Utah, 700,000 square feet. You could fit three New Yorks in one of those states. They get money to rebuild no, all the land up there. Nothing happens. Nobody no. goes there. They go right back to where their homes were destroyed. The attachment to wanting to go to what disrupts our lives, to wanting to go towards that Saturn, to like you said, when someone puts achievement on the news, because we're so used to hearing bad news on the, on the news, when you hear an achievement, where does your mind psychologically go? That it's bad news. Because all the news reports is Saturn. So even if a Jupiter is put on that motherfucker, this is a Saturn platform, so that Jupiter must got something bad about it. How we're programmed. You know, if I can if I can interject, right? Because all of this is an experience, right? So I'm not I'm not pulsated or pulled by it. You know what I'm saying? Even just my, my son, his grandfather, you know, he watches the news all the time. You feel me? And he's always talking to me about how the world is ending. And I'm just mm. like, you have the luxury to think that. I have a one year old. You know what I'm saying? I don't have the luxury. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I, I don't have that, you know what I'm saying? I, just, right. I can't have that programming. I can't even, if you're right and it's rational, I can't even agree with you because then I'm just going to have to sit and wallow in my suffering, right? So I'm like, I'm showing him videos of flying cars. I'm like, do you realize that there, they've invented flying cars, that you could buy a flying car for the price of a sedan? Like, why, why are we worried about all the shit that really doesn't matter, right? So I realized that, you know, it's funny because Rob mentioned it earlier, just out of the nature of our human existence, you feel me? We are, we are more designed to be prepared for the lion who's in the jungle who almost bit us yesterday and we went home we went to sleep and we figured out how we could outrun this lion the next day our we are function to say i don't want to get hurt you feel me so then bad becomes our priority and our experience because you have to be aware of what it is you need to avoid therefore it becomes a focal point you know what i'm saying i'm extremely apathetic i tell people all the time if you count up one of the one of the expeditions in egypt it'll equal the amount of deaths in Chicago for a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. people have been dying all throughout history. You know what I'm saying? Um, just because you live in the incarnation where Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman's relationship looks like a race engagement, we don't know that if Trayvon Martin, you know what I'm saying, was the uncle that used to rape George Zimmerman in a past life, if you subscribe to the idea of reincarnation. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like all of those potentialities exist. Who am I to say that it's one or the other, and who am I to be fluctuated because of so? I think that the real purpose is expanding the mind by way of observing these things. Even just looking at Scorpio and how we were talking about manipulation and Pluto mm -hmm. being manipulation. When you look at the eighth house, when you look at the Scorpio house in Scorpio, the manipulation is done 
by manipulating the Gemini, the mind. You feel me? So the real conversation is, is how do we evolve the mind so that, yes, manipulation will always exist. Yes, right. tyranny will always exist. For the world, you would not there be able to... to be, there has to be a shift in values. That's the Uranus and Taurus most... transit right now. Yeah, but that is Taurus, period. Right. Which is also the desire to add, okay, things you value, place value, okay? And if there's... If the value is placed on comfort, which mm -hmm. human, human nature tends to do, and placed on food, then in, as long as that is provided for, the morals can be tampered with. Ooh. That's so, the 12th house of Gemini. Gemini is the fifth house of the age of Aquarius. All right, let me finish. I mean, I hate to be long-winded, but I want the thought, I want the complete thought to be conveyed, all right? So, what I'm getting at is, Elijah Muhammad had a hell of a program, okay? I like them all, too. So, don't think I got any favorites just because I mentioned him right now, all right? The uh, Garvey, businesses. See, your existence on this planet depends on those four things, too. The ability to survive and reproduce, which is Scorpio. Right? Your ability to do commerce in the world, which is Taurus. Your ability to govern your own people. See, we can't govern each other. We don't trust each other. We won't work together. Right. You See, and it's not a matter of unity because the Chinese ain't unified. You know, in these yeah. cases, I'm using these as an example. I'm not saying all Chinese people came over here with this or... So anybody in the audience who wants to bite down the phrase and run with it like a dog, whoop, okay? <laughs> the, 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 you know, they're not unified. There are right. people that no, come over not. here as indentured servants. Right. Okay. They, they come over here as indentured servants. Okay? So they're not unified with their boss. They're not for that shit. But what it is is about, you know, the beehive mentality. Right. And... Our beehive mentality dwindled centuries before Columbus even got here. Mm. It was already dead. Mm. So we're talking about resurrecting a dead horse, so to speak. Okay? Something that has been long atrophied. Okay? Like, is you know, I'm the weirdo on the bus going to school because I said, if there was a such thing as Jesus, he was black. Or... The moon in right. this place describes how it's going to be here. I was the weirdo, okay? I'm still the weirdo. We are still the weirdos, okay? The majority of people are moved by those four things. If you're not able to give them an alternative, it doesn't matter how much programming or not, man. I mean, you got to really think programming isn't the only devil here. Mm. Did you, you have to take an active role in passing bills that disenfranchise a specific group? Right? You know, there's no coincidences. So when people say, uh, you know, that's really, if you look at modern, it's not as bad as it was in the 1800s. There were billionaire niggas here during the slave trade. Man. The, the, the largest plantation in the United States history, in the history of the United States. Okay, not what it was before it was called the United States. The, the, uh, a Baton Rouge Creole family had the most slaves of anybody in American history. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, see, to think that it's strictly about race is ridiculous. It's about holding the land yeah. that, was never, that was never taken by declaration of war. See, now, see, all of this has to do with Pluto and Capricorn. Capricorn is the cap is the corporation, is the landlord, is the seat of the king. Okay. And there are those people who are doing the ruling, who are making the rules. Right? That you see the corruption of such a society. Pluto, the dark side is corruption too, right? And, uh, of the ruling class, not just the presidents and people holding office. But high ups all over the world are being pointed out for the wickedness that they're doing. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but to 
to make it short, I was talking about a cyanide cycle of 135 years to 110 years, using 125 as the average number, right? As the medium number, right? I'm talking about that cycle. That cycle has to play itself out, man. Right. To, and if you think not, then it only requires, we got 6,000 years of history that we can rely on, at least 2,000 years out of all those 6,000. Some of that shit got to be accurate, right? In terms of dating and trend, right? So therefore, we can use the past as uh, an example, astrologically, of what that shit means today. You see what I'm right. saying? Like, that situation where uh, somebody posted on the internet about Pluto, Pluto transit through Aquarius, is it that bad? It, it could probably be like that. Without any consideration for what Pluto has done, for what man has done while Pluto transited Aquarius before. Right. You see? So. Every transit is good for some folks and bad for other folks by virtue of the fact that that transit throws harmonious aspects and bestows of, and gives indication of opportunity for some people that have the strong trines and sextiles to it. And it represents struggle and obstacles and barriers to those other folk. And then there's people that have both good and aspects to that focal planet, to that aspecting planet. So this is the reason why we can't really speak in general terms. We can speak in collective terms. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can't speak in general, but collectively, you know, mankind loves his freedom. That's why everybody wants to get to America because they're all buying into that illusional ass dream of freedom. You know, how are we free if you need a license to do everything? You see, there's no freedom in a license, Chan. Right. Yeah. Right. Whatsoever. Right. There's no freedom whatsoever. Can't even you, fish in some places. Listen, you can't fish. You you can't own a business. You can't do anything. You can't do any, all of that. Not, you can't do that and have government protection. Yeah. Because, yeah, because you can, you know, work like a slave to become a master and attain the ability to have that freedom once you're able to take care of yourself. But there's gonna be some dependency. You see, this dependency factor is the glue that holds government and, and societies and, and, and nations together. Mm -hmm. You see? Dependency, the whole Capricorn energy. Right, so see, what's really deep is how many farmers are left in America? Yeah. Man. You see? Dude, we, Oranos and Taurus is showing artificial food. It says artificial food, okay? So the, during this phase, they're going to make advancements over the next five or six years that they hadn't made in, in 21 and 28 years with this artificial food, chemical food, and as well as electronic money and everything because... This is opportunity when Oranos comes to the fixed signs, he's going to carry out Aquarius's indications, mm -hmm. modernization, electronization, or, or, you know, he, so, you know, Marco. Yeah, Marco. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to know if you were really with us, man. I'm really, yeah, you know, I'm really with you. And I, 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 I'm following the Pluto. Oranus side nod here. Okay. So we've only did 25% of it from civil rights to now. Okay. Of the last Pluto Oranus side nod. Okay. Mm. So these strides with regards to the advancement and the evolution of human values is not likely to increase over the next 60 years, if you just look backwards over the next 60 years, it's going to continue to degenerate on a collective scale. Certainly all, every cow in the field ain't going to catch mad cow disease, but if it's out there, a whole bunch of cows going to fall. You see? So, <laughs> so, you know, basically that's my analogy. And uh, to be honest, to be entirely frank, I believe it's all necessary, you know, just like there's no skilled seller. 
that um hmm. has not braved a a rough ocean okay um there is no soul no spirit no god spark it takes an individuated form down here that does not advance through the process of its experience you get that even the killer the murder the rapist all even the worst they all advance in life growing from a child to an adult they all advance in their spiritual journey through time so um you know and looking at the schematic how victims and, and their and their and their uh persecutors are attached you know astrologically you understand that this is all necessary for human growth evolution basically you know astrology does that to a motherfucker we got they, conversation about it before that you 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 look at the nature of reality and you understand the nature of reality you also understand this chronology chronology to some extent mm -hmm. okay and you know the, I'm not saying that, that this is the only science that gives you a blueprint for such an uh, for such a paradigm. However, you know when you are able to consistently measure these trends and determine their outcomes and the nature of their influence before it even happens, you know, and then you get to see it come to fruition, not as you said, but as the, as you properly analyze from the motion and measure of those planets, then you begin to understand that there's no accidents down here, man. Yeah. Okay? Trying to put reason to it is like trying to write the history of every day all the way back to the days of Menes in ancient Kemet in 3100 BC. Okay. So, like, I really... Say to me, say to myself that you know, these are the days and times where people have to get their fucking status correct, their mind right. So there you go. We got how do you correct everyone's mind? Well, you first must correct their values. Yeah. They have to have a common value, or, or or something that they all equally feel the same way about. You see, and as long as that doesn't exist. The only thing we feel universally in agreement with is uh, this motherfucking mint. See that? Mm -hmm. You tell yeah. everybody, make it, <laughs> you, you make an announcement. Said mint. I'm like, right. Yeah. <laughs> like what, Look, candy? That's no. a dollar bill, <laughs> this guy. Mint, okay, yeah, no, Look, okay. shit is mint green, all that, man. So and it's minted and all that, right? So, the um, you you gotta understand what I'm saying. Here. You know, if you tell everybody, make an announcement on 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 um on on your Facebook or Instagram or whatever, right? Whatever board you go to and discuss and socialize, and they say, yeah, we're going downtown to protest the illegal arrest or whoever the fuck. You may be the only one that shows up there, literally. But put on that motherfucker that they're going to be giving away a prize. They're going to have a 50 cent lottery that you can win $5,000 off of. Right. Yep. Facts. And it will be the million man march down there, motherfucker. Okay? <laughs> so it's really about value. Because it ain't mindset. The intelligence, the mindset is determined by the having or the not having. Heavy. Yeah. So when you say I got we gotta correct the mindset, right. you need first to correct the home. Right. You gotta value knowledge and whatnot. Exactly. Right. But the but the home is I fucked get you. up. <laughs> the family values are shaken to the court. Just look at the spell that they use in the courtroom to deprive you of your of your uh, uh sovereignty through that process of disenfranchising you of your autonomy when they have your mom, the moon, signing the paper, Mercury. We did this lesson before. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That chain, that Chaldean order from from fast to slow. It's the same thing that they use all the way across the board everywhere. You see? You as long as I'm living right, I got a place to lay my head, I got nourishment, the moon, right? Uh I can chillax. 
And I'd rather talk, Mercury, about this shit here. You dig what I'm saying? And eat and live and be merry and satisfied with what I got, Venus. You see? To, 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 uh, authorize myself to take command of my own being <laughs> and enforce my own mother. You, you see what I'm saying? Enforce my sovereignty and be responsible for myself but with my knowledge, man, overcoming all that is unknown to me without fear for the rest of my life. Do you see that change? Mm -hmm. the, the solution is in the, the recipe for destruction. Okay, the first you know, and that's a perfect, just to interject and pardon me, just when you said how the family was destroyed, people don't realize, too, that the destruction of family or the destruction of moon, moon is also community. It also destroyed people's ability to create a community, to actually have some dependency or reliability on the tribe in your own community. I mean, I'm probably the, the last generation, what, the 80s babies, early 90s babies are probably the last part of the generation that as a whole community experienced multiple families taking care of you, the whole street taking care of you. you they used to give out books when I was in school that had all the kids' parents' addresses and phone numbers. You got this booklet. I don't know if they still do this, but the way that they try to keep everything so private, I no, you can't, it. that they probably don't do that. But when I was in school, you got a book that had every, every kid you went to school with, their name and address, their parents, so that people can get in contact with one another. And I don't even hear of anything like that anymore. The destruction of being able to survive within our own communities. If they took away government, like I said, you know, just as the example, they want to defund the police. They want to completely do away with Aries. We don't want any, any enforcers whatsoever from the government. But if they were to look in their community, do you trust your neighbors to have your back? Do you trust your community that if somebody's robbing your house right then and there, that the people down your street are going to all run in there with guns, bats, and prevent this is this assailant from occurring. We haven't built our communities to withstand something like that. We would literally be left on our own because we've forgotten how to do it. I see yeah. that, you know, I don't, I wouldn't rely really on the people that I see down the street to stop someone from kicking my ass before they pulled out their phones to record it. Do you see what I'm saying? So in my own community, I can't even rely on my own safety. I'm going to be totally on my own. You know, so I see that just just by mentioning how the mindset first by figuring out what's been destroyed and instead of relishing on what we used to be to find those pieces and rebuild something new that we can. That, that are, I'm going to handle that in a second. Uh, everybody knows on the egoist media that I have children <laughs> and they run around and act a fool. So I'm going to go see about that. But I'd like you guys to interject on just the, you know, we relish on the past. We can't do anything about we have destruction um, in the way that we think in our families and our communities from these passing transits. They see they indicated that things have been destroyed. And now people are like, well, what do we do? We have to do this. We have to do that without first realizing what. You know, so I will be back. I, after my break. I feel like um, everybody uh, needs to get really family oriented, man. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I, to piggyback off of that, I feel like I feel like what really has to be done is is that people have to um, relinquish their attachment to the experience and its happenings because when you do that, you can actively observe it and give that information to your children. So the next time, do you know that Siddhartha Gautama was born in the in the Aquarius Dwadashama of the Piscean Age? <laughs> Detachment from the world, or, you know, relinquish, you know, what do they call that dissolution? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So what'd you do to my cousin when y'all was on the way to the crib? Let's let the, let the whole world know. You say what? What'd you do to my crew? He ain't said a <laughs> word. He ain't said a word. He ain't said a word since the broadcast. What's real, Marku? Word. 
<laughs> he left out a word. He right. just said word, right? And I know Mark who has some things to talk about. That Pisces mind of his is a, a vast, a sea of everything, never ending, endless. Where is it? Give us a give us a drop of that ocean that you're that you're swimming in. <laughs> so I've been taking notes while everybody has been talking and I've been very patient because I know that my cousin is long winded and I like to give him respect. And I know that Kafre is very intelligent and in how he's picking up this and advancing um, the science of cosmophysics. And I also learned from listening. So I'm a student um, here, um, honestly. But I have here um, taken down some notes. Um, I just want to rip through them what you guys were talking about. I can't help but to, uh, when I hear conversation or people talk about certain things, I can't, I can't help but it automatically runs through the astrological or the cosmophysical calculator that's in my head, right? So I want to talk about the bad news thing. You started talking about bad news, and this connects into Saturn and Capricorn and Cancer and the relationship that y'all been talking about, which Godfrey and I have been talking about. So boom, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to be all over the place because that's who I am. However, news has everything to do with Gemini, right? So yeah. if you put Gemini on the ascendant, and you find Cap let me speak. <laughs> All right, sit down, man. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta know we in front of the whole world here. You gotta, I energize her bunny your legs with that, man. Like, yo, y'all, y'all are hilarious, yo. Y'all are hilarious, yo. I mean, I know exactly where he's at too, because if you interrupt me, I forget where I'm at too. I just wanted to throw it in like an ad lib. No, don't come back. That's what. That's what all of us. That's what all of us do, yo. It's just the hierarchy of age. You know what I'm saying? Mark. Like we all do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? You pull right, right? You got thirty my bedtime. He's cool, 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 cool. Okay, we are, we are. Do do I need a mute, Mark? Do I need to mute, Rob? Rob, you need to be. I've been muted. I've been muted. I've muted myself. No, not you. Go ahead. The floor is yours, sir. It's good, but I want to. I want to. I want to at least get the thought out. And yeah, go ahead. Spit the thought. Because I know that it's gonna. It's gonna brainstorm other ideas before I list off these notes, which is the same stuff we've been talking about. I just want to generalize and simplify for those that may be listening and are into astrology, and they can connect to the zodiac signs of what we're actually speaking about. The floor is yours, And I sir. see that when you put Gemini on the Ascendant, you find Capricorn in the eighth house. As we know that the eighth house is the house that destroys, right? Mm -hmm. So the government, this con this conversation that Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn are having, and yes, it's the control over the government, and yes, it's the implement implementation of new things, and yes, the news and the media have to spread the fear um, because that's the only way that they get the power to even have this thing running. Um, I want to tell a little story with the mask thing that y'all were talking about. I had went to the liquor store and the man, as soon as I walked in, I didn't have my mask on and he panicked. He was like, Oh, you got your mask. Where's your mask? Where's your mask? Where's your mask? So I put my t-shirt up over my face and he was like, no, it's gotta be a certain kind of mask. It's gotta be a certain. And I'm like, well, why? well, I mean, if it's a virus, if you have a face covering, it's a face covering. Long story short, I brought him outside. I told him to come outside with me. I said, so you're telling me that it has to be a specific mask. It has to be a it has to be an N95 HN95 mask in order for the virus not to be spread, or is this does a scarf work? Oh well, 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 you knew the specifics. Long story short, that has to do with the information that people are listening to on the TV. The reason why the people are scared as shit is because people watch the TV too much, and just like you said, the news automatically has Capricorn in the eighth house. That's their mission, and they focus, and they focus on the eighth house. They focus on the eighth house, and that eighth house activity that the media does and that news and that information that destroys and brings a, 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 a negative, you know, Capricorn's a negative sign. You know, when it comes to authority figures, it's negative. Sometimes we interpret that. That goes into the subconsciousness, and we interpret it and give it to other people. When it comes to news and information, you know what I'm saying? That same information is then distributed by the people to everybody else, and then that spreads the fear as well. 
You see what I'm saying? Be mindful that the North Node is in Gemini, mm, and the fire breathing mm, mm. dragon is is giving the media all this this amplification of energy in order to speak these lies and fallacies. Even if someone is telling the truth, the media can fashion it, Gemini, and switch it, go back and forth. You know, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius are the air signs, and they all three of those have a a a, a seesaw action, if you will. You see what I'm saying? Um, I said all that to say that the fear is Capricorn. I'm giving Capricorn the sign of fear. Ra, who just said that everybody needs to fix their families. We've, I, I've heard Ra, who say this. I feel like this is deja vu, honestly. Mm. We've been talking about this for years, honestly, that it's the family. And I made the connection the other day because I've been digging into tarot cards a little bit because I like how the tarot cards attached to astrology or you can see astrology and it sort of tells a story. And I told, I said, I did, was doing a live or something, something, and I pulled the devil card and I recognized in my own psyche, I was like, Oh, cause I came from a Christian background. I was like, Oh, I got the devil card. That's Oh, <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I should be, it wasn't that much, but you know what I mean? I recognized <laughs> and peeped it in my own psyche that there's a fear and this is what other people have as well. Everybody has Capricorn in their chart, and everybody is scared as fuck of something. Yeah. And the only way that you can get over your fear, right, is by opening up to it. Notice how Cancer is in the summertime. It's hot. It's, it's hot. You know? when They say that Cancer is the crybaby, and if you notice that when you cry, you sweat, you get hot. There's all this energy. That's the cardinal sign of water, right? And that's the emotion that we have about the fear, Right? And that relationship of fear and emotion and all that stuff. But when it comes to looking at how to uh, uh, healthily um, become one with the fear so that you can be liberated from the fear, is you have to be able to freeze your emotion. You have to freeze Capricorn winter, the emotion summer cancer. You see what I'm saying? There's a, when, it, when it comes to the the nodes if you will they say that the north node is the purpose and they say that the south node is your last life or what you came from right it's the same thing you can apply that same um interpretation you can apply that to an opposition by itself and you can mm -hmm. look at the solution and the problem and the problem being the fear capricorn and the solution being the emotion and how your emotions are set towards that fear how you act we could be in a car remember when you were younger and you were in a car and you were like, you know, you were rocking to the, to the music, Biggie Smalls playing, smoking weed and everything like that. And you see a cop behind the, behind you and shit like that. And you're oh, you're fear immediately. You're like, oh, shit, don't look straight. Look, don't, don't look in range. Don't look, don't do this. And all that fear behind a thought. And the cop could just be behind you because he's in that lane. There's so many scenarios that apply to this is what I'm saying. That people have fears about things that they should not be fearful about. And if they are fearful about them, they have to put it in a, in a, in a control. Like I use uh, the Archangel Michael um, in the picture. He has his foot on the demon's head, right? The demon's not dead, but he has his foot on the demon's head, which shows that he has control over the demon. But, and you have to maintain that. It's not a work that you just do once and then the de demon is defeated. No. Look at an addict someone who's addicted to someone and they stop addicting for 30 years that 30 year and one day is still that demon is still there because if they slip up or if their triggers are there they can get propelled back into it mm -hmm. so when it comes mm -hmm. to the family like rock who said that's the foundation the four points that we're talking about we're speaking about the fixed signs but if you look in the natural zodiac it is the family the woman what you put into the ground and what seeds you sow you see what I'm saying? And how you are seeding um, and your subconscious at the time that you have these fears, if you don't place yourself in a position where you can attempt to start liberating yourself there, that's where we get the freedom, right? Look at how freedom is Aquarius. Look at how Capricorn is before Aquarius. We have Aquarius here, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Pisces is the disease. This is the problem. This is COVID-19, right? Capricorn is the government and the control, and the midpoint of both of those is our freedom. It's clear as day to shows that they're taking advantage of our freedoms. But if we're not liberated and our 
are 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 encouraged the opposition of Aquarius is Leo right and our heart and know who we are and be proud of who we are and ignore those fears or not let those fears get the best of us then we can start moving forward right now the universe is saying brotherhood sisterhood and start talking talk together to start working about these problems and things that you have because we're not talking about it instead we're watching the tv and the news and oh he doesn't have a mask on <laughs> that's not important but it's very important like we've been talking about about the subconscious if people are allowing this it look at look at the word information information is not just a bunch of words and stuff that we get if you slow down with the word information you get in formation you get informed you get informed to the processes and the way in which the mind works hmm. some of the ideas that people have about things are not processes of how the mind works it's something that we've created because we've got used to them and we like them so we make this a process but that's not the process i'm so excited <laughs> um, no i love it passion you know, trying to share knowledge um, to people that aren't aware. And, um, another thing too. Um, where am I? So, uh, Malcolm X, Rock. Who? When is Malcolm X's birthday? What's his sun sign? I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. I, I respect that. I love you, cousin, so much. I respect you that. You still can't hear me. No, I can hear you clearly. I like that. I like okay, that volume. I can't hear y'all. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no, I got it. I actually I'm did. talking to I thought he. I thought he was having a whole conversation <laughs> with me, bro. <laughs> um, no, I've been listening. I gave you what you wanted. You know, thank you. I appreciate you. Get your little five year old tirade. Tantrum. Oh, guidance. Uh -huh. guidance. Remind me of my goddamn kids. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. Uh, fuck out of here. Um, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I see that. I see the, the fear angle. They're, they're, they're coming at us at every angle. So, you know, when you say, you know, dependency, fear, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we got a list of things right. that we need to get in order. The first thing they need to get in order is values, proper family values. Man. See, because you see, if you run home, if you can run home, that's what you'll do. You see, if you can't run home, then you'll go out there. And you'll brave this, you'll brave the storm, right? So the the point here is, you know, people are gonna have fear. There's always gonna be a coward. I hear that. People are gonna be hungry, man. They're gonna need to eat. Okay. The it, it starts at self sufficiency. Mm. It starts hey. at self sufficiency because if you if you're not self sufficient, how you gonna eat? Okay, this is that's the first thing they can say. Uh, yeah. you gonna go down in the police precinct, you gonna blow up the whole precinct, right? And right. then you know, okay, and all 100 of us are gonna after we do that, what are we gonna live at? Right, what right, we, right. What right. we gonna eat, y'all? Right. Okay, after we get out, so you, you, you know, the values, and and it, this was a process, y'all. This started with the Punic Wars. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's hundreds, more than a thousand years old. Okay? It's not about white and black as much as it's about white man that owns the land, that's exploiting the land, trying to keep the people from reclaiming it. Because then what happened? You know, you see Hong Kong. Right, you saw what happened in Hong Kong. You saw what happened in Uganda. You send them Europeans packing. Get the fuck out of here. Right. See, so in order to keep Hong that Kong from wants them back. 
the way they're acting. <laughs> In order to keep that from happening, well, first, you have to even go back to the English Empire because the English played the same trick on all their colonies. The United States right. is still a colony of England. Right. That's why, that's why the president is a POTUS. He reports to the queen. He's, represent, he's a representative. Oh, of the I didn't mean to cut your wisdom. Supposedly. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Cut the wisdom. I'm only talking because y'all not. Oh, I, talk, I, I like to, the, we're I talking. Like to learn, to too. That. I like I to learn, to too. That. I, wanted I just to wanted to to make, that. I wanted to make honorable mention that no matter where we go, it's family. Value. I wanted to add. You have to value mm-hmm. life and survival. If I can add in on to that and piggyback off of that, um, you reminded me of what I wanted to say because this country, I've been saying this for a while, that this country is 1776. This country was established in 1776 on paper. That's not the beginning of this country or here, that we, this landmass that we live on. And if you do the research, uh, which most closely, um, uh, the people who were oppressed were the, the indigenous uh, nations the Seneca, the Iroquois, the, 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 uh, the, the Cherokee and whatnot. And their statues, I bring them up because they still have statues and, and, and replicas of them. And even in the social studies books, what they gave us, you know what I mean? The 1776 on paper. But let me keep it astrological because there's a lot that I want to say about that. But I want to keep it astrological. This country on paper is 1776 and the sun sign is cancer, correct? Would we all agree with that? No, we all don't agree. We all don't agree? No. You're talking about the Declaration of Independence. Okay. Not this country. You're talking so about what is country. this country. You have it at Gemini, right, Ra? What is the sun sign of this country? Jump the gun and everything. Yeah, I have it at Gemini. Okay? My point is that in order for this country to declare its independence, in a document that had to be written and edited and all that before it was signed. You want to call the signing of the Declaration of Independence the beginning of this country? On paper. I get that. I see. I, 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 there are other details in my mind that, to mm. me, refute that. I don't want to refute you. I'm going to let you mm. have that. But, you know, like the, the treaty. Yes, Abdullah, what was that? The treaty of, well, as soon as I'm done, Abdullah can speak, right? The treaty of uh, uh, 1781. 1781. Uh, I mean, um, you got you got negotiations with King George before the Mm. uh, uh, the declaration. Mm. The and did they had a a military? Did they not? So what about the birth chart for that military? Right, right. See, all, right it depends right. on what you're looking at. You're going to right. get a chart that works if it belongs to this culture. It's going to work. It's like me doing his well, chart let's keep... to see mm-hmm. how his family's doing. Okay? So mm-hmm. my, my thing is, you know, you, they want to say um, the 4th of July, 1776. Okay? Then... Where is the progress chart from the 4th of July, 1776 to what, November 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor? Does that show up in the the Declaration of Independence chart? I see you, I see you. Does that war show up on a fucking angle, nigga? You know how we do it in cosmophysics. So I can't use if it right, don't right, fall right, on right, an right. angle, right? You can't bring right. me an event on an angle, and then three successive or three random events to work on an angle perfectly with the key wordage of that planetary plot. I'm not going for the idea that this country was born on July the fourth, 1776. So when you said, so now that you said that, I appreciate that. I'm gonna do the research and the piece to it, and and correctify my um the uh, uh, math for them being a Cancer rising. And my point is, is that if they I are a Gemini, right? You know, that are solid, rock solid to the yeah. date 
to the definition of the planet, to the to the delineation of the planet. Right. So I'm the not sun sign. Right. You see. So with I want with, real astrology. In other words, I don't want the delineation of bullshit. I want to see motion that concurs with the action in sky, in the literal fucking sky, and on the earth, okay, and in the land, and in our own person. If you put new, y'all have eyes to see, ears to hear. You don't see nothing. You see, my my point is that it need to have a solid foundation and basis, man, in what we're dealing with. So when we say that the United States was born on this, because the history books say that, the history books say that King Tut had blue eyes and, and white skin and blonde hair too. You can use yeah. the declaration though. It still is a chart point. I'm not, I am not refuting that. I think I made that very clear. Yeah. What I said was it depends on what you're looking at and right. I'm not going to give the start of this country to that date because that date produced the document that this country produced. They right. had presidents. So what? It was Continental Congress and not the present form of government that we have today. You dig? They had presidents. You right. see, they had a Congress. So, right. yeah, they had a constitution. See, so I, I don't, you know, they were functioning as a nation already, doing trade in the world, fighting in fucking Tripoli. Like, you know, I, 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 uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a question. Yes, Abdullah. I got a question. And this is this is me aggressively trying to be the useful voice. So I say this with all due respect, right? Because in my mind, with all due respect, you sound now. Okay, I just want you to know that before okay. you get into your shit, you sound like you're talking through a different device now. That's probably because I got my headphones too hot. Mm, I know it. Right I know it. Right, you're not muted. What there you go. Because we're we're standing right next to each other, so that's what that is. What's you about to keep... rise? No, no. I'm. Go ahead, Abdullah. All right. So I, I want to be the aggressive, youthful voice in the room. Um. Because I think it's sometimes it's fun, right? Uh, so I so I want to do that with all due respect, right? Um, in my mind, again, with all due respect, my plan is that all of you are going to die before me. Like that's my plan, just mathematically, right? Like that's how I would assume things work, right? So with that, right? What is the avail? What is the avail of the dialogue? Because I feel like there's banter on. What is the solution? And then there's conversation on it being a circle that has to be complete. Therefore, there cannot be a solution for it. Is it something that is already swirling and it's happening? So my thing is, is like, I want to talk about the cool stuff because yeah, I, don't I, like I am it. I'm coldly referencing the astro my from my astrological experience and and paradigm. So so if I could so if yeah. I could interject right if I could interject right, um, because I know you. And I know the nature of that rhetoric and where it comes from. I know that to be true. I know that to be a fact. You know what I'm saying? But I also know that that's not um, readily available material for the average individual. Or is it worthy of them even exploring it because it's well, only going to change but so much in their reality? I can answer part of your statement. If I let you make five statements, then I'll have to hold all five of them answers. I can't do that, right? So I'm going to answer the first one, okay? The, I like your choice of words, banter, nigga, all right? So, <laughs> you know, fuck you talking to. All right. <laughs> so, 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 look, the thing is, it's, it's not banter. We need to see where did we lose the family at? That doesn't require any long drawn out. We lost it at the, you know, slavery when we were right there. Okay. And in that era, even those that weren't slaves, they, they were disconnected from the slaves. You understand that, right? Just because of status. All right. So, the, it's the restoration of that family values has to begin exemplarily. That really has taken place. The solution, the solution is, I said it, self-sufficiency. And you, now there are a million of examples of that out there. Mar Elijah Muhammad starting businesses, Marcus Garvey, example, Big Daddy Grace, Father Divine, all of them. They they showed us how to build business. They actually come out of that 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 generation that Jupiter, Saturn, 
uh, uh, conjunction of, um, in Capricorn. So they came to teach the people business, okay? But the, the, there need to be a correction of status and a gathering, see? With, without res regard for differences. And let the common cause of building the community be where they're unified. They don't have to be of one religion. Nigga, you, you, you work now for a company where there are Muslims and Christians, white people and black people and Puerto Ricans, and, and they all work for one fucking boss, no matter who he is, okay? <laughs> they all work for this nigga. Right. Okay? They all work for them niggas, okay? For them dead presidents. So the, you, you see where the values are placed. You have to be able to feed. You have to do it. So, you know, 19, I just read recently that 19 families got together and removed themselves from society here in Georgia. But a massive plot of land that they're going to develop into a city. Opposition from them called them racist Caucasians was like, uh, you could set your watch by the shit. You knew they was coming as soon as the six o'clock moved. You know what I'm saying? With all their protesting. And their gun rally and scared we're gonna reclaim this land. Okay? That the old Mex are gonna wake up. The the point in the matter is it always starts off as a few. And there has to be a few folks that are willing to work together. Now you wanna call that unity. And the example that is set from the prosperity of that choice is what will serve to motivate the next motherfucking perimeter. In the in, in you know in its expanse, <laughs> am I losing your head? So so really, <clears throat> it starts at home. It starts at home. You know I realized this when I had kids. I said, damn, you know they destroyed the family, and from from there, how did they destroy the family? Welfare, child support, all these angles, man. Now See? if I can interject, if I can interject, right? If I can interject, right? I don't disagree. And I think, I think, I think your answer in and of itself is what I'm speaking on. Right? So for instance, right, me and you both just recently had children. Right? Yes, sir. Those are none of the things that exist in my contemplation of the reality around me. I don't have any of those thoughts about any of those things. What, that for what me, are those things? I need clarity. Um, my, 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 my sovereignty, um, a uh, 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 collective identity and unification. Oh, right? yeah, 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 because you're so, worried about your seeds. No, no, not even just that, not even just that. I'm just saying, just in general, I'm so far removed from that narrative as it exists on my day by day. Granted, I think it's important to be able to reference it and understand how it gave birth to the conditions as they exist currently, right? But for me, right, just even having this conversation, right, you keep saying how uh, Taurus, right? Taurus is important, right? So Uranus is in Taurus, right? I know right now that there is so much legislation being pushed in the support of so many non-conventional family structures. So right now, the majority of our social dialogue is about what is a family structure? What is, how does a family look? Can you have two mothers? Can you have two daddies? Can you have five daddies? Can you have six mothers? <laughs> There's so much conversation or even just how the family structure is supposed to look, conversation, right? So as much as I agree that it is the value system that we have you feel me? That'll create some type of collective action. You know what I'm saying? But the, the barrier and the problem with that is, is that we have so many varying ideas about what that looks like. And we live in a society where we have to allow people to be themselves to the point where we've created legislation to make a multitude of people comfortable. I, so I know you're not saying that, that, that you agree with this discourse of, of discussion. I mean, now what you're saying in the chronology you say, you don't necessarily agree with everything you're saying. You're, you're just speaking plainly how it is. I, I think about my seeds. Right. You see, I are, uh, and I feel genuinely, individually, personally, like I look at him and I'm constantly thinking of ways that I can program him to be able to automatically overcome the programming. Likewise, likewise. Okay. So I am working on my family. Right. Okay. You know, I don't know how much influence I have, really. I can't knock on my neighbor's door and say, hey, look, man, 
uh, fuck Jesus, man. You need to let your kids come over to my house and study under me so I can, you know, I'm going to teach them real black history and I'm going to teach them about da da da. You, you, you see that I'm talking on how the one hand that you call bent is what I desire. Right, right. And right. on the other hand, what I know is that this shit going to get worse before it get better. So, so here's my thing, right? Here's my thing, right? No matter what we do right now, tonight, here, or, or dis- tomorrow. Personally, I don't disagree. That's why I don't think the conversation is worthy of, of being solution oriented because the solution is, is to enjoy the experience because it's an experience worthy of enjoyment. I right? mean, I feel- really on a metaphysical level, I can't disagree with that. And, 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 and that take, has to take precedence across the board because because for real, for real, we, we say that. We say other detachment, other this, other that. Like, you know, all this is a, a sea of atoms. <laughs> all of this shit is an illusion, right? So feel that way when I walk into the house, when I force him, kick your door down, grab your son, your innocent little son, mm-hmm. and give him to a gang of rapists, you know, and string your moms up and all and Say, oh, wait, wait, wait. So, so if I can all of this to- shit, detachment and attachment is the cause of sorrow, God. You know, all... This is nothing but an illusion. No, you can't do that. Because there's a reason for all of this. You have to realize your limitation and your ability to affect others. The whole purpose of this dialogue is to wake up folks. Period. Okay? So, to, a, to, a, to, a, to a wider, to a broader schemata, because they're going to hear my point of view and agree or disagree. They're going to orient and situate themselves as a result of exposure to the, to the, the or they're going to do like the common man, the Saul, the 85er, the right. inferior man. They're going to harp on beauty, on the comfort of food and beauty, man. Now, okay. hold on, before, before, you, before, you, before you hop back into the terrace bag, there was two things that you said, right? You, you gave the one example about, about my seat, and you gave another example, um, and in no way, shape, or form do I disagree at all. I think that, for instance, even just in that example, right, that, would, that can't apply to me. You know what I'm saying? That physically can't apply to me, for I understand that my, my son will never meet my father. My father's dead in the grave. He has bullets in him. He's, he's under the ground. I would have loved for him to be at my high school graduation. Certain things just can't tangibly exist. Do I sit here and do I revel in the fact that I can't create that experience? Let me finish, let me finish. Do I sit here and revel in the fact that I can't create that experience? Do I sit here and revel in the fact that I don't have my Glock on me and I can't prevent this happening from happening? At the end of the day, I, don't, I choose not to suffer in the fact that it's granted. I can't say that everybody else has to do that. I can't say that there's everybody else's destiny to do that. It's not what I'm saying whatsoever. But I'm saying that that is harder to apply to myself because I understand that a law is the greatest of planners. If that is how, you know what I'm saying, the conspirings of the swirlings of the universe around me want the story to play out, then I only have but so much control in stopping that. That's even something that you further introduced into my psyche. You know what I'm saying? Understanding the... I can't hear you. What? You know who you are. I appreciate that. Okay. You know what I see? Is oh, I see hold on, oh, listen, wait, listen, wait. let me explain that because okay, go ahead. most okay. people watching don't know what the fuck I meant by that. True. You know who you are. You know what your chart says that you got to do it. Right. Okay? It ain't everybody's place to be a fucking warrior. Exactly. Okay. You know who you are. My son was born with the sun conjunct Mars. That's police contact in any culture. (laughs) Okay? Especially in this environment. Any city, urban area, any heavily populated metropolitan. You know, uh, the thing is, people have to be shown an alternative. Mindset, an alternative opinion, an alternative perspective, they have to get all that. When you, I, personally, that's some old Pisces shit, nigga. I don't see myself as being affected by this shit, you dig? Yeah, okay, but you just gave testimonial, you just heard my cool give testimonial to the mask. That shit would happen to you too, what you gonna do? I don't really care what you gonna do, that's not why I asked the question. 
My point, <laughs> my, my, my point is, my point is, you walk down the street and close mm -hmm. in August. Yeah. Yeah, at the, at the 23rd degree of Leo and it's blistering. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you, you know damn well if you had your way. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. I ain't to speak English. You ass naked in the motherfucking sub. With I knew that was you I, didn't, you, nigga. I didn't choose. So I didn't choose to speak yeah. English either. I'm with yeah. you. I'm yeah. With okay. You. My point is, you, you still operate within confines and constructs. That's the point. So you know, the thing is, you know, I'm an old man now. I put in work. Right. So I, I'm, but I'm not gonna get on YouTube and try to glorify. My motherfucking interaction with government officials and agencies. I mean, I did that once. I don't do that shit no more. Because really, you uh, uh, you ain't going to do it unless you built for that shit anyway. Right. Okay, so you know who you are. And when you say to yourself, I refuse to suffer. You are gonna raise your kid to be conscious of the uh, of the harms and the dangers in this society, right? Child is gonna know what a crackhead is by the time he's two fucking years old. Because oh, I think the best oh, way to oh, don't, don't get in your fucking pride, Leo. I'm not. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. I just want just, you to look at how certain things are spoken to plant seeds. I remember conversations from, you know, I, I took my clean Shahada, became a Muslim at the age of fourteen without any parental. Or, or social prompt other than the fact that I read the autobiography of Malcolm X and I wanted to be just like him. Same thing, that's funny. Okay, yeah, I know. We both had Saturn in the same degree too. Now, watch this here, all right? So, I done been through all of that conditioning. I done seen all of that, Right. all right? I, had, I heard conversations amongst the adult Muslims when I was a kid that I didn't, that I retained. Right. But had no clue of until months mm -hmm. later, like 10, 15 years later. Right. Oh, this is what the fuck they were talking. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Right. So therefore it isn't this generation. I just explained it's a whole, Pluto or Ronald Sinod is going on here. <laughs> People have to be made aware, though, of what the indications are given on the way there. Just like when I ask you, go measure Pluto right. and do not come back to me with some grand average of how long it took Pluto to go 360 degrees. I want to know every time that motherfucker go retrograde, I want events of similar keyworded Pluto keywordage aligned to the aspects of that motion because see that's astrology yeah. you will you have no clue just in that measure and in that comparison uh, along that measure right what the fuck you're gonna learn that's a whole you see what I'm saying you're gonna learn much more than I could utter if you gave me five years to spit it out okay yeah. just from doing it so th it's the same way. You see, like you understood what I said because you understand orbital pattern, but you didn't really get to grasp of that till you actually started. Right. <laughs> yeah, to do that. Now, if okay? I can. So let me finish. So here we're having a discussion about current events and the astrological uh, pertinence of it, right? But we first must, like any astrologer, must identify what the fuck we're reading. Because to just read any chart, you don't know whether you're reading a pickle or a jar of peanut butter. Right. Right. Okay. So you you so you have to be able to put it in context. And so that's really the, the purpose of the discussion. What is to be attained by this personally is that it'll get me some recognition as an astrologer. Right. Okay. This is a fucking commercial. Right. You understand that? Okay. And those people who have the mind and the planetary alignment to be receptive to this will take this and benefit far beyond what right. you can comprehend because I can look at my stepfather coming home from Attica 
pressing me to study them lessons when I was nine, eight, um, uh, um, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, you know, even though I look at that shit now as fairy tale, metaphor, all right? <laughs> However insulting a people watching may be by that. I look at all that shit as metaphor. So the that was necessary. Right. If we, if we take the path of denial, that's what made me say that's some Pisces shit. Right. Because there is suffering. There's not a, a day on earth without some form of suffering. See, I, 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 now I don't disagree, right? Because, you know, from, somebody asked me about that the other day. And I was, you, you, you poor mimic, but I know whose voice that is. Sound more I don't like know. my cousin Jerome. Who said that? You can't take the child apart. You said somebody said who said that. I said that. Okay. I told somebody I couldn't take a slice right. out the chart because people were right. people were trying to say that like, or oh, are you saying that? Does that well, I'm not. I'm not saying it doesn't you. exist. I'm saying I can't take a slice out the chart. I'm saying that I can choose how I perceive it. I can choose how I engage it. I'm not saying that trauma doesn't exist. I just had an extremely traumatic experience that made me cry and a whole bunch of things. But then I acknowledged the fact that wow, it's a blessing to feel, right? And that that is where my focal is, not in the trauma that I'm experiencing, but the fact that I have the ability to experience something. You feel me? I take the time to revel in that mentally and actively so that I don't engage in the suffering of the body because the suffering of the body is meant to happen, bro. When, I, when you take some shrooms, you're going to have a stomach ache because it's food poisoning. Like, you can't get away from that. The difference okay, is but, that if you... Oh, uh, pardon. I didn't mean to, to just jump in like that, but you, you brought up the point, and I agree. I know what you're talking about, that whole reflection after the incidents, and that's the piece that's missing. When you're explaining to someone you know, what it is they need to do, right? And the reason why I say it's the part that's missing, one, Neptune right now, where I'm currently located, is transiting over the, ne the ninth cusp, which has to do with us broadcasting about Neptune shit, denial and the freedom from all that and, you know, reflecting and going into oneself and, and imagining, you know, what it's supposed to be for, your, for the personal. But opposing that, which where Venus is right now, is in mm -hmm. Virgo that analytical side, that missing piece of the value of getting from point A, which is raw, to understand the suffering and what we're dealing with and the concrete evidence to crossing right to you, the opposition, where you're just like, let that shit go, it's the experience. Do you see what I'm saying? There's that middle part, just like uh, just going to what Marku was saying about getting over the fear. Like you can't get to your point where you're at now unless you face the stuff that Raw has done until you get over the fear that Marku is speaking about. So when you're asking for a solution for someone, one of the things to reflect on is to reflect on the steps it took to get there. You first felt what and did what, and then you came to what and did what. Oh, I can't hear I, you. I, go ahead. You hear me? Yeah, so now, yeah I, now I can hear you. Go I, ahead. I agree completely. And ultimately, I think that's my point. I just respect that. You know what I'm saying? I got to work around how it is I'm articulating my point, right? But I agree. I agree in totality, right? And here's why I agree. I agree because I'm not saying that it's something that everybody has to engage or acquire or um, revel in. You know, in no way, shape, or form, I feel like that's a necessity. For me, more so is that when you're engaging in Oh, life understanding is a necessity. That point you get to, that's where we should be aspiring to, to accept the experience and understand what's happening. And so, right. And so my thing is, is I'm only here to present uh, an articulation of that, you know, in, in, in youth, right? I, however it's received, right? But like, for instance, right, to Rob's point, Rob made an amazing point about how technology, right, and the whole, uh, when you were talking about how businesses didn't even want to use the internet and all those other things, right? Rod gave me this assignment, the assignment he's talking about where I had to track Pluto's entire cycle, mm -hmm. right? And he told me, he's like, get all the ingresses, get all the retrogrades and get all the conjunctions, right? I got all the ingresses, right? I noticed there's a retrograde as soon as Pluto goes ingress into a sign. So I started marking down. So I'm like, bet, I got the ingresses, I got a retrograde. Then I'm like, I saw another one. I'm like, what is going on? I Googled it. I was like, yo, how many times does Pluto go retrograde? And they're like, Pluto goes retrograde once a year. So I'm like, damn, I'm only getting one retrograde. So I'm like, all right, fuck that. I'm gonna do the ingresses. I did the ingresses. I'm like, I wanna complete this assignment for Ra, right? But then I realized that there is no way I'm about to track 250 retrograde cycles for one planet before Friday to have this conversation with him. <laughs> nor am I gonna, no, check this out. Nor am I going to be able to get all of the conjunctions 
you feel me, amongst doing all by Friday and then pull the charts up and connect those to historical. But I did. Mm-hmm. Here's how I use technology. You feel me? I use, that's probably, I could probably show you better here. Yeah. Right. I use technology, right? I had the computer do that for me. But that's because I'm not of your generation. You understand? I didn't have to, in my brain, my brain didn't say, all right, well, damn. I, all I got is in the femurs. I'm like, yo, somebody built a fucking engine to do this shit because there's no way. It, it, it really doesn't matter how you got it because at the end of the day, when I test you, you ain't gonna have none of that. And you gonna, you gonna articulate for me the process of a retro, the mechanics of a Pluto retrograde. And I'll retrograde. do you one even better. I wouldn't even rely Pluto on the technology. retrograde cycle. How many days, how many degrees is the one that you measure, stay, go back, measure, retro, all that. Because they're not all the same, you understand? And you know, I su- I suffer y'all motherfuckers <laughs> to, go, to go through that <laughs> because at the end of the day, you're still gonna have to go back and get the mechanics of it, right? So that you can visualize it and be an astrologer walking. Now, if I can finish my thought, right? Get out of here! What is wrong with you? Because I agree. Right. And for me personally, me personally, I want to go through and spend my whole day watching the chart spin and saying, oh, snap, that's a conjunction stop. Spend the whole day looking up dates. Right. But I'm like, I got till Friday and I got the assignment on Wednesday. <laughs> okay, I don't have to, I don't have to, let me finish. Really, let me finish, let me I finish. never expected you to get it I know, by Friday. I know. But hold on. Let me finish. 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 That was apparent when I called you and I said, bro, this was an impossible task. You know what I'm saying? You, you caught me. And I, I sit here and I tried to do it and I still did it. I just realized I couldn't do it in the way that I thought I would have had to do it. I had to do it in my generation's way, right? So I say that to say, right, that if it really is for the children and it really is for the future, then I don't plan on living in America in the next 12 years. I plan on finding a piece of land in the middle of Senegal. So I have to find out how Native American and sovereignty and all those play into my narrative is I don't even want to associate with that shit. I want an island somewhere. Right, so for me, right, in so the for age me, of Aquarius, right, so for me, and, and, and where I'm at is like, for instance, I took these these dates, right, and I color coded them, right, I color coded them. This was in the course of getting this assignment, right, and I realized that there's a relationship between Pluto conjunct Jupiter, 1918 and uh, 1914, 1914, 1915, Pluto conjunct Saturn. So he talked about that. He talked about the World War and how those things uh, uh, came about under a Pluto conjunct Saturn. You know what I'm reviewing these dates and seeing what happened on these dates. The fact that the fact that Pluto ingressed Aquarius a, as far back as I went in 1777, 1776, depending on where the femurus you're looking at. The fact that Pluto ingressed Aquarius during the American Revolution and is about to ingress Aquarius right now, I think that speaks volumes to what we're about to experience. But all I heard, all I heard was, this is the solution. Man, I want to see it happen because that's what we do. We we show people how it's happening. So my thing is, is I got all this work of watching how it happens. You know what I'm saying? That is what I feel like is the most merit to present because it's like that shows people that there's an anomaly, there's a question, there's a pattern that they're not clocking. That if they had that awareness of it, they wouldn't. The news wouldn't affect them as much because they'd have another outlet. Like you said, they'd have an alternative to absorb and observe reality. You feel mm-hmm. me? So for me, it's about presenting the alternative in its format. You feel me? We're all going to have different brain. Like, for instance, like even just the thing Marcou folded when he said, do we all agree? You feel me? No, we're not going to all agree because we all can have a, we all can move the ascendant one degree because it associates our reading more efficiently. Right. So the testament is not to agree. The testament is to say, well, what do you receive based off of your interpretation of what chart you're using and why do you use that chart? And then that was this is what that would speak to. That would speak to America in this particular nature. But we could go further and we could find another origin for America and that can give us further indication. We can use all of these things. So instead of trying to, you know what I'm saying? But the difference is, is that it's all about what, what's the purpose of the dialogue? You know what I'm saying? To say which chart, you know what I'm saying, is more accurate or to show people that if you actually just looked at the fucking chart of America, we could actually just see all of these things happening and then progress the chart and then you feel me and we can see how it's going to be indicated with these different charts as they are still associated with the with the you feel me i, I was having a conversation i may let me, me, me interject i i may brief mention that it's like looking at the chart of a family member seeing how the whole house is being affected uh-huh. so you can use the declaration of independence chart for certain things right okay the um, I found a date that gave me angular 
or a, or a perfect aspect according to the nature of the planet. I don't want to divulge it. Right, 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 right. I want to so write either. about it. I want to write about it. You understand that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because, you know, so I was just, I had just gotten to the point where my predictive measure was consistent, consistently accurate. Right. So I, I started using this method on, um, on charts. I started using that method for, for charts of the United States. I started off with December, I mean, um, with July the 4th, 1776. And I used the exact same predictive me measure to progress the chart to Pearl Harbor, to, pro to, to progress the chart to the, uh, the attack on um, Harper's Ferry by John Brown and his band of merry men. Okay, so I looked at the Nat Turner's revolution, the eclipses, all that stuff, and I put all of that on the 1976 July 4th chart and received no exactitudes. I did not stop there. I progressed it to 9/11. Uh, okay, we got no angle. I got more from the transits. The exact transit of Saturn on the ninth cusp in the location is what gave it to me. That's what I remember from that, from that report, right? I have to dig it out to find it in my notes. But at any rate, so the whole point is when you recognize, you know, you're not breaking the cycle of nothing that you don't know the cycle of. You see, and the, the, the key point and recognizing the indicator for the reality is going to be cosmophysically measured and it's going to con concur with everything it does this. You see, it's not a matter of belief. See, there's people out there that don't know, like you said, no knowledge, you must believe or not believe something. It's still belief, it's still a matter of belief. Okay, so, but when you, for years, you know, and you find it, it's plain and evident. I mean, it's obvious, you see. The motions don't work with a specific date. Then, and you find a motion that does. I say the United States has a Gemini sun and a Gemini ascendant. I say they have the moon and Aries. Okay. So, so that you, makes perfect you, sense. Look, so you can take it on back from July the 4th, and there's only going to be so many charts per year with the moon and Aries. Okay, <laughs> you can situate the chart, and it's in the month of Gemini, so you can narrow down when the day is. You see, dry snitching on yourself, huh? <laughs> dry snitching on yourself. No, I'm really not. Like because nobody knows. I didn't yeah, give up with no cycle. They're not gonna do the math. They're not gonna do the math. Yeah, even if they do, they, they, they the right what one. what guarantees that they're gonna come up with the same exact date and time as me? They're not using my method of measure. Right. Okay. Right. Now, I've had, I had success with this chart that I hear described. I did miss the invasion of Iraq by one day. And did I really? Right. Right. I did this chart for here. They were in the air going when I said they would. So I really didn't miss it. They were on the way there. They had already decided to go more. They were time traveling, so you couldn't get the time right. <laughs> yeah, I know you had fun with that video. Right? You know I had a ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're like, you did to give me the time to think yeah. about that. Right? Let me finish. Go ahead, I you that. It wasn't just that; it was also the uh, the invasion of Afghanistan. I was one day off with that. Both predictions, I was one day behind in my projection to the event, right? So that already let me know there's three to five minutes of time that I need to change that time of birth by in order to get that motherfucker right on track, right? And I progressed it to Harper's Ferry, to to the uh, uh, Treaty of Versailles, the, the invasion of, and it got, and I got angular hits with this motion, with the, with the motion from the chart. So when I say there's more than one chart that can work, 
if the United States Marines were started before this here federal government, mm -hmm. then the chart for the United States Marines will read the United States Marine Corps. Right. You see? So when we go to war, we don't need to do a chart for that. We can just do a chart for the Marine Corps because they're going to war. We're going to see if they win from looking at their chart. Right, so, right. So that's what I meant. Yeah. You see, too, too many people get online and say, oh, I use Lois Rodden's Astro Data Bank. And she says, Malcolm X has a Taurus rising. What? Yeah. I can progress the chart to the date of his father, to the date of his marriage, to the date of his imprisonment, to the date of his release, to the date of his murder, and all those events, right? I got the exact hits for that the planet describes the nature of the event. Yep. Okay? Yeah, now, that. so those people that say, oh, no, Lois Rod is accurate for me. Where the fuck is it in your math? Right. Show it to me. You see? Show it to me that in this number of degrees that many of years this happened. You see what I'm saying? And show me that the this that happened is the alignment of these planets and that the key words of this planet describe that event as history does. Can I interject? Can I interject? You uh, No, you can't interject. You have to sit there and be totally quiet. We brought you on this show to be <laughs> yeah, a prop, yeah. not a yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I keep right. saying you Fuck can right. jump and in. See, and... <laughs> Yeah, hey, you know, my thing is, my thing is, is man, we martial artists, man. We, we, we conduct ourselves a certain way, right? But with that, right, it's funny just to say that because that was one of our first, um, that was one of my first lessons from you. You made me, you made me figure out what Malcolm X's ascendant was. And I cheated because I used one of your pictures on Instagram. And I told you about it. You know what I'm saying? You was like, I was wrong in the picture. I just posted it. You was like, you still got to find it. And I was like, damn, right? So, right? Yeah, so because I was, what I did on uh, Instagram was I posted his New York city ascendant where he died right so i didn't post his nato ascendant where he was born and there's a difference between new york and so let me finish right so omaha finish, right? nebraska yeah so, right so let me finish right there is a difference between omaha nebraska and new york but do you know how you show me that in the chart you made me progress his chart to his father's death but change his location to lansing michigan right that was how the death that's where he was at. He was yes. in Lansing. So, and just in that lesson, you showed me the importance of how progress charts work to confirm the accuracy of it being somebody's birth chart. And yeah. also nuances that can change that and create variability in that. What I realized is that the average individual that claims to be an astrologer really is making that statement based off of their ability to interpret that person's chart the way that they have absorbed that person's character or personality to be. And mm. one of the things that I realized with that uh, differentiation is that we are all 12 signs, right? Because we have 12 houses. Regardless of what signs fall on those houses, those houses are still a reflection of the energetic of the sign that, that is associated with them, right? So I ask people all the time, I say, well, since you're right here, you're right now, right? Let's just, let's just go over this, right? Since you're so sure about your ascendant and you're not an astrologer, right? Um, explain to me what's the difference between the first house and the third house. How would you separate the self from the mind? And if I told you, that are you asking accurate. me or you're no, just saying no, this is what no. you ask them? I'm not, I'm asking what I, swear, I'm, I swear to ask them, right? Because a person will have an ascendant that's actually the third house. You feel me? And it's like, why would you not resonate with your mind as your ascendant? Why would you not? It's still off. It still wouldn't give me accurate events to give you accurate predictions. Just because you identify and can associate with one of the aspects that we all have within our chart doesn't mean that that's your accurate ascendant. So I just think that's an interesting value between actually calculating measure and seeing it work in real time and utilizing the measure of others because it works well with the narratives that you've been given or the narratives that you want to, to push. You know what I'm saying? And I think because people don't know how to differentiate that association. You know no, I think they do. I think they realize that most people don't know and therefore they can get out there and say what the fuck they want because 99% no, of the people No, because they know that most people know. want to feel good. And anything that's told to you that feels good, you accept as the truth. If I sit there and say, you're handsome, you don't want to deny that with me. You don't want to say, nah, I'm ugly. You know, you will take that as to feeling I, good. I qualify. You know, so yeah. I find that a lot of us astrologers or people who want to get into this field are in the field of making people feel special. 
instead of making people feel more aware to bring down that bag of bricks on their bubble world so that they can actually start doing something that benefits them and the people around them. You know, I think this is the feel, you know, any they turn it into a spirituality when this is we more mathematical. Benefit they self well, yeah, and it's easy to tell. If I tell you you look good, you're going to treat me good. If I give you compliments, if I flatter you, you might have a better disposition towards me. So you of better course, not have you know. the sun or the ascendant, the Scorpio. <laughs> well, see, I don't take to flattery. I have Saturn in my ascendant. I take, and it's in Scorpio. I get instantly, what do you want? You know, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? You're not just doing this for nothing. But um, no, I see, like, for example, I saw this post on Facebook where there, this, uh, this astrologer was basically going, you know, oh, Libras, you've been having it so hard all these years, and now you're finally going to, you're going to come out, and you're going to do this, and this is your moment. And there were hundreds of comments and likes and shares and Libras in there going, thank you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there going, how, nigga? Have you looked at the chart? <laughs> do you see what is bombarding them? They have to repair this square from Capricorn to their sun. While you're sitting there saying that there's a moment to come out, there's a lot of things that they have to put back in order because of the square motion from Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter this, these enti this entire time. I mean, Pluto's been there since, you know, 2008. But I'm saying with Saturn and Jupiter bringing the extra heat to tell them that they're just going to come out so that they can feel good. And I get it. Positive reinforcement. People want to say if I treat you nice and I tell you the good side of it, you'll go forth and do something. Yes, I will go forth and feel like I'm invincible and walk in front of a train because I feel like I'm going to come out on the other end. That's how I interpret that. Do you see what I'm saying? So I feel that... Um, one of the issues, and that's one of the things I wanted to bring back with this, with what you and Abdullah were talking about, is the purpose of knowing these mathematics, the purpose of knowing you're reading the right chart, the purpose of tracking these events to these planets. What truly is the purpose for these people to really get the truth? You would think it's just the truth, but how would you explain that to them? If I can give a quick attempt, because you brought something, it brought me back to a thought of something earlier, and I have a great reference for that, actually. Um, but uh, it was in reference to something with, um, with my son, right? You asked my son if I was gonna protect him from the woes of the world. My philosophy is the exact opposite and it's going to lead directly into that because I personally feel that because people are coddled away from the woes of the world, they have no ability to create systems and contingencies to protect themselves from the suffering of it, right? So I plan to introduce my child very early on to all of the horrible things of reality so that he can have the actual ability to contrast it and not feel the need to be pulled towards it because of the mystery of it in, 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 as he grows older, right? He'll be well aware. My little sister has drunk alcohol. She smoked the hookah with her. She did all that shit. So when she goes to college, she won't be like the little girls that I saw in college who was running around drunk their first day and had to get carried home just because they've been sheltered their whole life. You feel me? So I've seen how that works. The best way for me to teach my child how to manage their trauma and how to manage their suffering is to show them that there are things in this world that will make you suffer, right? Where my cool bro? Oh, he's right there. He's right there. He's not gonna say it right there. You know he got his headphones in, he listening. Oh, okay. um, but I, I want to use that to, to, uh, to segue into what you just said about, um, about Libra and the square of Capricorn. It was something significant that you had said. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. About the part about them having to repair after all the damage caused, or it was maybe it was right before that when I mentioned that they were going to come into their own. The good post on Facebook I saw about Libras now being able to flourish. Huh. Right, they better, right, right, right. As long as they maintain their proper discipline and they restructure their their love nature, then then they will have a smooth transit of Saturn through the fifth hour. Right. There, if they have any children, there will be a need to restructure and to bring order. And if they have any planets in Libra and Gemini, then the aspect they're formed by Saturn's transit to there will reinforce those places if they apply the 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 uh, cultural norms of what Saturn is said to represent and give indication of. 
Uh-huh. So they're gonna they, they gonna have to do some restructuring because that's the type of weather they're in. If they do not, they will meet massive disappointment, delay, and ruin in relation in love or with relationship with regards to their children. They will be damaged in that interaction. So you you have to you know people don't like really people the majority of people being dumbed down have also been given the dream right. that that you know. Life is, you know, coddled every like single, Abdullah said. Right. It has, a, it has a margin. I wanted to add also retort that I don't recall focusing on the suffering aspect of this. It was just something in response to what he said when he said I refuse to suffer. Because <clears throat> I'm going to suffer whether I ab- uh, establish a fair government or not. You know, whether my kids grow up to be super successful or not. And I am going to be happy in the midst of my suffering. Right, right, exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Ain't going to be no woe is me right. about none of this. Okay? I think, and, and I think to, 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 uh, to my point, to, to what Marie was saying, I think, I think that's the problem is that because people have the woe is me design naturally, that people coddle them with their chart and they're not realistic and they're not true with the fact that it can go both ways. <laughs> even just even just in the in the in the banter that I've, I've had with Rye in our personal time, I'm starting to realize that it does not manifest as one of the things that it could manifest as. It manifests as all of them at one time. You know, I was, ah! telling, somebody, I was telling somebody yesterday, I was like, you just remember it being an argument between you and your spouse. You don't remember the police Big. riding past you to go get the to the fire that was happening. Yeah. Right. Feel me? Right. You didn't see the fire truck, the policeman, the fire that was down the street going the opposite way that you were going to have your argument. You were only focusing on the one that was pertinent to your reality as you were experiencing it. You feel me? It right. manifested in all of those ways. So it'll always be, you know what I'm saying, difficulty. And it'll always be discipline. This good. They're going to manifest at the same time. Are you going to focus on the things that you disciplined yourself for? Or are you going to focus on the things that created a difficulty in your experience, despite all the things you? Well, I don't see with? how you can ever uh, uh, improve your condition without a proper identification of the difficulty, which requires some kind of focus and uh, the the uh, equal lateral focus on improving yourself. You fall in the ditch, you look down and look. Oh shit! You realize your shit. Now, are you going to dwell? That's the word. Are you going to fucking dwell on the fact that you did? You get the fuck up and keep it moving, soldier. Right? It ain't nothing but a little bit of mud. Right? Either, right. E- either way it goes, the reality of it is that you're going to get all of it. Right. Yeah. I remember this discussion with my wares when we first got together and she was, you know, trying to learn the keyword. Right? And she was like, well, couldn't it be this and couldn't it be that and this and that? And I'm like, no. The incense. I was determined to say that the incense were, uh, what did I say? I wanted them to be Mars. Yeah. Oh, and I was admin about it, much like, you know, know, a lot of astrologers out there who say that this is this. But he totally proved me wrong. Why were incense not Mars, Ra? (laughs) What are they used for? They're used for uh, meditation scent, scent, smell. It's a smell. It's a perfume. What rules perfumes and scent? Neptune. Now, I did a Mars thing to it, but what it is is a Neptune because it is nothing but scent. You know, I was thinking perfume. Taurus and Neptune, but I also Right, because it's the wood. And then the Listen, sign man, and the- listen man, please. <laughs> you know, go through that again. <laughs> Get a mental plan. I ain't gonna put you through it. Here it goes. Watch this. <laughs> you know, we we say that Aries rules the head. Mm-hmm. You know, but the head without the heart to pump it blood. Right. No life. Okay, now, the pumping of blood from the heart is a Leo thing. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we can get into the exaltation of the sun and Aries with that. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. But no, but let 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 us discuss. <laughs> let us discuss something non anatomical. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you 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 see how the twist gives the variables. All right. You know every. I just want to say this because I just lost the thought I really wanted to say just now. Right. <laughs> Every 600 years, Tradition. every 600 years, society's history repeats itself. Mm. 600. Yeah, a narrows, N-A-R-O-S. Oh, narrows, the narrow cycle. Mm. So if you understand that, it's really not exactly 600 years to the day. You right. know? It, you know, it's is it 600, ever? It's six hundred civilian days plus nineteen days. Is it ever that simple, man? Civilian, <laughs> civilian years. Pardon me. Two hundred <laughs> civilian years plus nineteen days. So, <laughs> at any rate, the um, if you, you know, you do the knowledge of these things. Did you figure out the Berry Center? I've been writing down retrograde, man. <laughs> B-A-R-Y Center. Yo, between the two of them, yo? Between the two of them, yo? You like, like Saturn Pisces? His Saturn and Virgo opposing my Saturn and Pisces, bro? Bro, I gotta tell you, I don't even notice I can sleep in the bed no more, bro. I fall asleep in my car when I... Be sitting there like... Did you get the, I'm up, I'm looking at it. I'm reading it right now. Man, I, I was late for this. <laughs> but I see, I would see, I would like to focus on what Ra Aku is saying because- The motherfuckers um, like to play, man. Even I'm though saying. I don't like the, even though I don't like to do the math, I can see that when Ra Aku, uh, you know, instructs one to go through these cycles, it's the same way of you actually looking at your chart, which is one of the yeah. most important fucking things to do if you're getting into astrology so that you can be able to see these things. Because the only way that I've gotten the courage to go up to some random person and share any information with them is because I've taken the time to look at it in my chart first um, and tinker with it. Uh, I yield the floor with that. Oh, um, shit. Marie, you asked a question, and before we go off track, because that's what the fuck we're professionals at, let me entertain that question right quick, because I think it'd be useful for people to perceive reality in this way, right? Um, so I had, I had at one time, I had, um, I had two significant others that were living with me, right? Um, and I'm a Pisces rising. I have Gemini in the fourth house, right? Um, at 24 degrees, 23 degrees, 50 arc minutes, right? And I have Mars at 26 degrees. Right, and there was this one event that I had with these two young ladies, and they were killing me. And I just had I had to address them about some things. And um, I'm a very passionate individual, right? So I addressed them about these things. I walked away from the situation. We continued our day. I looked at the chart the next day. Lo and behold, transiting Venus is in Gemini and crossed over my Mars. Mm. And I was irritated, Mars with my Venus partners, Gemini dualistic in my fourth house home. Mm -hmm. So I watched Venus come inside my house. Dualistic? Well, her double nature or her her sibling? Dualistic. I had sister wives in my house. I had Gemini, sister Venus. You know what I'm saying? So you feel me? So I watched that Venus go across my Mars. You feel me? I was irritated with the relationships in the house. You feel me? Because Venus came across my Mars. You feel me? I watched that experience happen. I remember being at my mom gave birth to my little brother. My little brother is 32 days older than my son. And I am uh, 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 32 days older uh, 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 astrologically than my little brother, right? I'm, uh, I'm August 10th, he's September 11th. My son is October 13th, his birthday's in, in three days, right? We're all 32 days apart. Me and my son are 64 mm. days apart. You feel me? So my little brother is the midpoint between me and my son, right? So when, he, when my mom gave birth to him, I can see that Mars was rising. That's and crazy my- how you just said my little brother's the midpoint between me and my son when the third house is the midpoint of the motherfucking fifth house. Yo! <laughs> see, that's that, that's that shit I love. That's what the fuck I, yeah, that's what the fuck yeah. I, and see, and you know what's crazy, right? Is that I was looking at the, I was looking at my P2 when my mother was giving birth, right? And 
I'm a, I'm a Leo. So it's funny because you know, I was talking about the Pisces thing and whatnot, right? I progressed into Virgo a very long time ago. So I'm very I'm, I'm big on the details, right? My Mercury's conjunct my son, right? So in progression, right? My son in Virgo was on the fourth house cusp and my mother gave birth to her Virgo son. Mm. That is exactly 32 degrees away in movement from Mars hitting my ascendant in Cancer. Mm. Sextile Virgo. I literally can show you in a progression. I can pull out my chart right now. I can progress it to the day of my brother's, my brother's birth. I can press the button 32 times and you will see Mars hit my ascendant. I can show you my brother and my son being born 32 days apart in my own charts, bro. I can show you this by primary direction. Just moving my chart, just one day equals a year. I can show you my father, Saturn, meeting his end, 12 house cusp. I got Saturn at 10 degrees and my ascendant is 24 degrees Pisces. I can show, I can show you Saturn mm -hmm. crossover. And I, and I show people because when you go nine, it, it, it doesn't cross over. You go 10, it crosses over. My father was killed in March and my birthday is August. It was in the middle of my ninth year. So you got to go all the way to the 10th year to watch it grow. I can show it to you. <laughs> you know what? This astrology stuff, I swear, it's like we live life. That's watching the movie. And then you go and read the book. You read. <laughs> so you look at not, a chart, not, you get the book. So when you read the script, you feel me? It's a lot harder for the movie to make you cry. You appreciate right, the look nature. Here, look here. I want to literalize the book of life. Literalize. The content. The table of contents mm -hmm. is your birth chart. Mm -hmm. Got it. So you, you got 120 pages for the 120 days after your birth. Mm -hmm. That's 120 years. Then you got 360, or really 359 charts in between each each of those motherfuckers. 360 progressions a year, all right? And that is your book of life. So what is 120 times 360? That's just one to get there, get the pretzel. Oh, I want a pretzel. You said 120 times 360? Yeah. That's going to be 43,200. Yeah, that's pretty good. I knew it was going to come up to the count of 432. I just couldn't get the zeros in my head right there fast enough. So, yeah. Right. So, you know that there are, are that many progressed charts in that book of life I just described. That's how many pages are in that book. Right read your whole life unfold right and see that right there the study of that astronomy it coupled with the observation and properly timed is the best astrology book on the planet earth and you can make that motherfucker right at astro.com you know what's what i wanted to bring up too with that <laughs> thought is i heard I've, I've been seeing a lot you know from people um, uh, in different comments or something, I'm not going to live my life by astrology. I'm not going to, I'm going to actually live life. I'm not going to keep checking the charts. I'm not going to keep looking. I just want to live. I, I hear this as an argument as to why they don't want to pull up charts and whatever the case is, staring at a chart instead of staring at life. And I think what, what's missing in that attitude is that the astrologers that I know, um, you along with others that are on the same paradigm, don't just treat astrology as if they're looking at charts they see the chart in the life they live so while people have the idea the notion that you know something happened we're instantly going like this every single time just to put out this per you know this you know, so people can see this perspective of it that the more you study the less you're actually really doing this unless you want you know your pinpoint precision progressions making sure the rest of the world comes out like Neo in the, in the Matrix. You start seeing zeros and ones, but you understand life. And um, I, I think that people think we're just looking down at charts all day when really we'll go outside and we'll recognize the energies for what they are, knowing what's, you know, you see a whole bunch of police pass and you'll notice the first thing we'll do is look at each other like, which one of you motherfuckers is having a Mars? It's not me. I'm recognizing this. You see cats running all over the place and you know that a Leo has touched some aspect or a hidden angle for your perception to be focused on it. 
where you can actually see these things play in in life. So when you're coming across these energies and call them whatever you want, but as they are in astrology, if you come across these energies, if you start seeing a whole bunch of ambulance and fire trucks and, and all, you know you're getting ready to walk into a situation that is some Mars or Rano's energy. And since you know what those planets can also, or that energy can also bring into you, you can actually be consciously aware that if I go in that direction, I'm going to be presented with Aranos, I'm going to be presented with Mars, I'm going to be, pre and whether or not, like I said, because, you know, Ra will jump in on this if I don't say it, <laughs> that your chart will already tell you which direction you're going to walk into. Your story is already written. But to be aware that it's happening, there's a magic in that, like Abdullah was describing with the motions of his son and his brother being born and being able to see that and then read it and know that those energies exist. The, um, like I always say it, and I have to say it again, that the most underrated miracle on earth is life itself. And I think what astrology gives the, the individual the ability to do is to truly recognize life. Because with astrology, these planets and energies and signs rule everything. So if you're going to study them, guess what you're going to end up studying? Everything. Because you're going to need to expand your, your, your information, your knowledge, your experience, so that you can know how this works. You know, I, look, I used to ask Ra, how did he know what to say in a reading? You know, it's almost psychic how he can just pinpoint exactly what it is. <laughs> and he explained to me of his experience. He went through it over and over and over. He was presented with it constantly. Because he was looking for it, he could recognize it when it appeared again that he knew I can attach that if you're having an argument that it belongs to Mars. So, and I keep seeing this pattern over and over. So when it pops up again, ah, I'm prepared, I'm aware. And not only that, I'm wowed, <laughs> I am amazed, you know. You no, know, if, if I could piggyback off of that, right? Because I feel like there's an active use for it too. You feel me? Because I use it actively, not even just to say, oh, wow, that's crazy, right? I use it actively to Make, my, make the mother of my child feel easier about the experiences that are going on with my child. Like my son is, a, uh, is an Aries rising, okay? Aries is fast ascension, right? So his Uranus is at five degrees, right? It wasn't 10 days after he was born because Aries is fast ascension. that his Uranus hit the first house cusp. And the mm. day I woke up and Uranus hit his first house cusp, I said his umbilical cord is gonna fall off today. And we went to, we had a checkup. So we went to, went to the doctor, I'm changing his diaper. One moment I look at him, the next moment I look at him, the umbilical cord is gone. And I just started laughing, you know, like, cool, bet, I, his time is right. <laughs> I said, that's all I said, right? Like his time is right. And so now, like, even just as he goes through experiences, you know, he won't be, he won't be sleeping and things like that. Well, I'm just like, well, Mars is an Aries. He's an Aries rising, he's transiting into the 12th house. I'm sure he can't sleep. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. comforting because it's like, when you-, when you Put your mother's rising sign. Uh, late, late, late Sagittarius, early Capricorn. So 29, I, I say 29 degrees. Sag? Sag. Yeah. You progressed your chart and tested it? Um, it's still wobbles, huh? Wobbles, man. What That's about the body parts? The stomach or the spine? The stomach or the heart? The stomach or the upper back? The eyeballs? You know you rectify my mom's chart before, right? No, nah, I don't fucking remember God. I just yeah, I, it I doesn't know. matter. You you which child of hers are you? First. Okay, you're the first one she ever made, right? That I know of. Okay, so so her fifth house is what? See? It's about to be Aries. It's either Aries or it's or it's Taurus. She's talking about right now. Well, which one describes you the most? Martial artist? I love the debate ass nigga. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I travel the whole country by myself. I'll go to any city by myself. <laughs> Fuck out here. Okay. Which one? Nigga, read me my mom's shirt. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, nigga. Okay, so now, so this this child, is this the first child you made ever? Not from you, what you've told me. But it is the first living, breathing child that come out of my loins, yes. That ain't what I asked you, mother. Yeah, this is my first child. <laughs> this is the first child born. Yes, yes, first child born. 
Not the first child made. I don't know. I don't even know about the one that was born. <laughs> okay. So that's what I'm asking if you know that. Yeah. Nah. Because now, if that's the case, then the first child of the first child is the ninth house. Right. So, so your mother will get the Leo. She spoils the fuck out. Oh, yeah, she does. I forgot. She gives that nigga all the attention she didn't give your ass. <laughs> Okay, see how that works? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Just from the knowledge of the fifth house is the first child, da, 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 and then the seventh house is the second child, the ninth house is the third child, the fourth house. The, I could go look at her first child, what her chart says about her first child, and what her chart says about her first child's first child. Facts, right. facts, 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 facts. You see? This is the shit that I have experimented on with hundreds of people. Right, 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 right. You see? So now, when I'm out there reading someone and I can calculate that, then pull out out. I'm able to walk with it. You understand? Mm hmm. Right. That's all I want anybody that comes out of my academy to do. Yep. You gotta see it in your own. Yeah. Yeah, walk with it. Because if you not if you're not, then you ain't really, you know, the greatest astrologers undertook studies and they took notes, right? Mm -hmm. And I look at their work. I don't really care what the delineation is. I'm looking at their method of experimentation and finding concurrence. You see what I'm saying? Then I'm going to take, I'm going to walk that shit outside or I'm going to pull it, use it on my kids or myself even to determine how accurate that shit is. Right. And you so know, it has to be done. The more you do it, the better you get. The more you understand the motion of that chart, the, the mechanics of anything, the more you understand the nature of that thing. So there's no need in, in providing a means of shortcut. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. If you I said could... earlier that the sun rose at, 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 at fast descent. It was in a sign of swift descent. You know? So you measure how many days. That that is... You know, that is a very long lost method right there. Yeah. Of directing, of determining. But Ptolemy spoke about it and so did a few other ancient astrologers. And what they were debating, what has resulted is the debate as to how it is derived from the station in the chart to the ascendant. Right? I don't, mm. know I don't even see it behind me. What am I doing? Okay, <laughs> to the ascendant. <laughs> Just had you like the news reporter did it. Here we go. <laughs> you know, at the ascendant, how far this planet really was from point to point B, right? So, but how the the thing was, is it measured in degrees? Is it measured in uh, mm -hmm. how long it took to rise that day? Is it measured in how right? And so the question and what the argument came out of, well, it should be used, it should be used, this should be used, that should be used. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the only way to know is to do the measure. Right, to do the measure. You will come out to a universal result. And if your first measure is off, then you got to know that your ascending is off. Dude. Simple, so, not complicated. And, yeah, it's just a matter of making your ascendant line up so that the measure works perfectly for the rest of your life. If I can, if I can interject, right, and and I and I think that is extremely important, and that's why it was so important for me with my son to get his time of birth down to the second perfectly. Like I had a window of seconds. I had from twenty five to like twenty nine seconds. I narrowed that down with his experience, and that helped me narrow down my own time. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I think that what, you, what we're speaking on right now is very important that we highlight that that is what makes cosmophysics so innovative, so unique, and so important, is that astrology has become so much about the banter of 
who's the better interpreter or how can we interpret better? The interpretation, I have the rulership book, right? So when I go through the rulership book and I realize how many words me and Marku have crossed off just in the rulership book because they don't apply, they're not applicable. You feel me? Mm. I was, I, who made me put the skin and, and, and practice with Sagittarius. Maybe put the skin in practice with Saturn, right? Saturn does a stretch at limits, right? So how could Saturn be the skin, right? Like that those things became real, right? And what I notice is that you get those type of interpretations mm -hmm. by having a realistic measure. And it's because people don't know how to measure or progress charts that astrology only then becomes a banter of interpretation, mm -hmm. right? I don't care about how you describe Mars. I don't care if it's a butt. I don't, care if it's, I don't care if it's a cut. I don't care if it's a stab. I don't care if it's a bullet. I don't care if it's a fight. I don't care if it's an argument. Did you have a Mars? Did you go through something Martian? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the point. I need to know that the measure is accurate. And then I can sit here and be like, well, Mark, cool. well, what, what would you call it? All right, well, this is what I would call it. All right, well, this is what I would call it. This is what Marie would call it. But we all know we're calling the exact same thing, something different. But we know that that's what the fuck is happening, okay? Maybe mm -hmm. you'll get into a fight with this person. Maybe, But the difference is that I, I respect that in all of his years of practice and even innovating the system and the style that Ra will be able to see far more indications that will lead, lead him closer to what it actually probably is more likely to be than just saying, well, these are the keywords that I know could exist in this experience. So look out for all of these things. I feel like because of his experience of reading so many charts, he can pinpoint how that thing will manifest. Man, y'all hyping me up, man. Y'all hyping me up. I just got a call oh, thank today. you. I got a call today <laughs> from a client that, that I'm dealing with in Great Britain. And he told me a few of the events, he didn't specify how many. He said a few of the events did not manifest as you described them. Mm -hmm. Though I knew what planet, I know the keywords to those planets. And those planets were definitely, he said, so the timing was to the day. Right. right? Okay. Within 24 hours. But the, uh, the interpretation. Right. It's given way more weight. Yes, yeah, in the measure. Did right. not, yeah. It, it is given some, there's a priority because people want to know what it means. Their intellect only extends to which is the level of what does it mean. Right. Not how often does this shit happen? <laughs> and you dig, here goes evidence of that shit. Or what else it can be, because they say it's going to be this, and it can be a multitude of Mars things. Mars means many things. Yeah, man. Mars rules two signs of the zodiac. Okay, mm. it shares a it shares a house. So that's roughly, you know, fifteen percent of everything in existence. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. The Mars points to. Right. 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 Okay. Right. So the signs too. Okay, which is only a segue to the point that you study, you learn to interpret what you study in astrology. Right, 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 right. Like, I know this fucking astrologer named Fred. Well, I remember a dude named Fred from uh, MSN Club. And all he did was the uh, uh, astrology of the stock market. Mm. He would say, I don't know how true it is, but he would say, I don't know how to read a birth chart. I'm looking for rise and fall in stock of companies ruled by this, you know. Mm. I think he's the dude that got the stock market astrology book and that's all he studied. Mm -hmm. He never got into how it affects human personality, how it affects human anatomy, how it affects the course of, of relationship. You understand? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and, you know, I have a very wide interest in a great many things, and I have been fortunate enough to have been exposed to several different types of people who were all information gluttons like I became. Right. Okay. And these brothers was hardcore. You know, you ain't got no business saying... Um, if you don't fucking know, don't say. Don't even right. act like you know. Yeah. Right. So that's how they that's how they treat it. So you know, you know, it's, it's kind of hard now when I see people fronting. Right. All right. And I know they're fronting. 
You know, I'm a teacher of this. I, I, I'm an expert at that. I'm a professional at this. You know, and that's their whole. <laughs> well, that's the values thing. Look at Aranos and Taurus now. So People just want to make money. Is, my whole point is, when you get to the point that you are offering or projecting what you are not and what you cannot give, mm. and you are you are conscious of that. Right. Totally you know, aware. You, you 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 can't quack for long, duck. Right. And and duck this shit. Well, we see that, which is why I don't understand why people aren't taking that lesson in. What is Saturn and Pluto and Man, Jupiter and Capricorn you doing? That, you see, you see people... the General Mills. You see the General Mills put shit that ain't even food in the food, and the average motherfucker says it tastes good to me. I grew up eating this shit. Yeah, I wouldn't eat General Mills at all. My point is, you Try realize something phosphate. that others refuse refuse right. to acknowledge, to 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 acknowledge. Okay, so it's just like astrology, when I see someone or some scientist says, "Yeah, I studied up on that shit," it, it's a pseudo science, motherfucker. You didn't get it. Shut up. It's way beyond your thinking capacity. The shit was too heavy for your brain. If I can interject because, too, not to cut your wisdom, right? Because I agree completely. I think that we have to draw a dichotomy, right? I think that's the one big thing with the, the metaphysical community is, is that there's so much discord between us and the scientific community because we use different words to say the same exact shit, right? Mm -hmm. And I say respected that. the fact, I respected pseudoscience, right? Because people used to hit me with the pseudoscience shit all the time. So I'm a debater, right? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a metaphysical debater, right? So imagine how many times people stop me in my tracks with pseudoscience, right? So eventually I'm like, yo, what the fuck, bro? I got to figure this shit out. Right when I realized that psychology was a pseudoscience, I was like, I respect the scientific rigor because it's not that they built a a, a, a box that says all that conscious shit that y'all talk about. We just gonna say that that's just not real. They say that shit about something that you can get a PhD in college for. You feel me? Psychology because it's about the fact that I can't prove it. Right. So astrology is a pseudoscience. Astronomy is a science. But because there's a discord in how these two are related to each other, we can't appreciate the science and astrology. You know what I'm saying? And the interpretiveness and in the astronomical measure. I think that is where we are creating the middle ground. We are showing the importance of that the measure is the astronomy. Our interpretation of it is because of our exposure to the same astronomy over and over again and, mat and matching or clocking those patterns. You feel me? So you have to humor the clocking of patterns that have been passed down as a study throughout the totality of existence, as much as you have to appreciate that it is a real mathematical engagement that we are measuring to get these interpretive ideas. You know what I'm saying? So we have to appreciate where they have a dichotomy and also where they come back together. You know what I'm saying? And I think that needs okay, to be The thought you just provoked was, I used to live in Endicott, New York. And um, I used to shop at this little gas mart, you know, and um, you should buy my blunts there and all that crazy shit, right? So uh, I'm on the phone doing a, a, a sample while I'm in line. And when I get to the line, when I get to the front of the line to the cashier, cashier's a white boy. He born uh, my fucking year, 16 days in front of me. Mm. So I can rewind the chart 16 days, no problem. I got his birth chart, his whole chart in my head, right? Right. <laughs> so um, he says to me, uh, you know, I work at the observatory out here uh, as a volunteer. I've been doing it for 10 years. I studied Jupiter and Venus, and I've seen the rings of Saturn. And, you know, astrology has absolutely no merit. I said, yo, can you hold on for a second? You want to hear me rip this nigga? <laughs> and I asked him his birthday. I read him to death. Okay? And um, he said, oh, you're scaring me now. I said, why are you afraid, man? You've been studying the planets for all these years. You've been working at the fucking observatory. Get on my nerve, dog. <laughs> 
my heart. Fact. <laughs> make that make sense, Woody. Right. You scared <laughs> you scared now because you see, people have lost this is the real truth right here. This ain't no conspiracy theory. The church sees the educational development of Europe as Europe became a world power. The church grew with it. Mm -hmm. You see, all the sciences. All the mathematical languages, all in Latin. So the Jesuits got it, and then it went to the legal. Now it's the government controls the education. Okay, but well, they're not doing anything different with it. The central government, Leo, or the controlling factor, Leo, uses religion or education to control the masses in the in, the, in area to Sagittarius to control. You know what I'm saying? Doctrine, religion, and all that. To and, and police to enforce that shit. Okay, the king does it. The central government does it. All works like that. So you know, is no matter where you go, it works. My thing is that we can show a definite pattern in the biographies of biographies of human beings. You must also take into account what has been omitted from the biography. Okay when you're making your measure. <laughs> so, to, you know, to sum this up, to wrap this up, because this is, we, you know, I'm tired, man. Yeah. We're hitting up on the um, three, hour, three hour mark. We had two minutes. I was letting you finish, but yeah, you could go ahead and wrap it up, and then we will thank everyone for being here. Where did Marku go? There, you know, there is a concurrence between heaven and earth, okay? Every 600 years, life repeats itself. So you think every, you know, there's a reformer every 600 years. There's a conqueror, a tyrant every 600 years. There is a, you know, a great inventor every 600 years. So there's, there's a you every 600 years. Okay. So this is the basis, the narrows is the basis of that measure for that theory. Okay. Because even if it's not you individually coming back to experience this solar system's electromagnetic tug and pull, like it's very similarly that you did in this life, the person who is born under that in your location with that configuration is going to live a similar life. So if that's actually your spirit coming back, I don't know. I don't really care about all that. All right, 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 right. Because the cosmophysics of it, for example, the place of Mars would describe where blood or infection has touched your body. Mm. You see? So therefore, tropically, it doesn't work severely. Mm -hmm. so, so when you understand that and you start to apply these planetary delineations in a, in a carnal and physical manner without flaw, the person has to be honest with you, though, right? right? But you will, without flaw, see that the chart perfectly describes the individual physically. That when you see that happen enough, that's enough. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if it doesn't predict the fall of the Pope and the, the crumbling of the American gun, I don't give a fuck. It lets me know <laughs> what my life is going to be. Right. Right. And the people that come to me and they live around me. Right. Okay, the Gemini is very much what Marie said when she said the ability to encounter this shit being aware. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just put this out there. That as much about the reality and the mechanics of reality changes when you are aware as water changes wetness once you learned it was wet. Talk about it, man. Still gonna be wet, regardless. I was with some, I was with some percenters the other day, and they was like, "Man, all that spooky ass astrology shit. I don't believe in that shit." I'm like, "It's cool. It believes in you. That's all that matters." <laughs> I'm not about to give you shit. Because it's gonna work it whether you, you know it or not. It's but, working. Man, yeah, yeah, <laughs> How you gonna yeah. believe in some?
time with. That's cool. It uh, believes number you. one, they, you know, the gods, the gods that that, that that have come out of that doctrine that embrace that doctrine. There are some of them that are open minded. They understand that knowledge is infinite. And there are others that will not escape the pages of the one to 40. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys yeah. for coming on this uh, live hosting. I don't know if I'll start doing this even more, but I, I think so. I think we, we have a pretty decent rapport when it's when hey, we, we can see have, one another. Have. Might do this once a week. Right, it's got to be cutting into my podcast yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to do both of them. <laughs> no, but we need to sit down and have family dinner. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it with you know what is that the 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 House of Aku the Cosmo Reality Show <laughs> will be next, right? But um, no, I appreciate you guys coming aboard to put this together. And um, make sure that you drop. I did put everyone's cash app. So for your time, for your insight, for your expertise, people can show their appreciation. And um, also make sure that you tell everyone how they can follow you, how they can reach you, and so on and so forth. Where is Marku for the second time? <laughs> Marku, come back. Um, he's right here. Come back, Marku. We're saying right goodbye now. We're going he's to say goodbye. Pisces King. <laughs> he was on as right, Pisces, on Pisces thing. What you gonna call it? Yes, go up. Yo, when I tell you up, man, <laughs> had a real ass day today. But um, but yeah, man, I just want to say thank you all, man, because it's because of y'all that we even feel the necessity to have conversations like this, and they could do so much for people who we are unaware that they could do something for. So you thank know, I you. I missed everything I really wanted to talk about. We'll I, do man, this I, more. I've sat with you. I've <laughs> sat with you. You will never get it all. I promise you. <laughs> Law he. That is you the got, truth. You, that is a mind of minds, Lord. That is a mind of minds, Lord. I, they like have I said, no idea. I thought that I loved information more than anybody around me. And so I met A.A. Rashid and I'm just like, wow, he's had a, more time to love information. Then I then I started really sitting down with you and I'm like, oh yeah, y'all Scorpio niggas, y'all obsessed. I just yeah. love this shit. Y'all are A.A. Obsessed. and Raku just, are know, walking encyclopedias. Walking yeah, encyclopedias. You know what I'm saying? But to close out, man, to close out, I just want to say uh, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, the word appreciation means to add value. So hopefully you have added value to me, to you. I'm saying any way you, you, you feel you can add value to me, um, feel free to do so because that would be your appreciation. So thank you. I love y'all. You can um, stay up with me uh, on Instagram as uh, NSWBTY underscore K-H-A-F-R-A, Nessu B-T Kafre. Um, also just make sure you follow in Cosmo 361, you know what I'm saying, and Marie, because I'm going to be popping up because I'm trying to be the viceroy of cosmophysics for the new generation. So, you know what I'm saying? Just stay in tune with the movement and you won't miss out on mine. You know what I'm saying? Thank y'all. Appreciate Peace. you. Thank you so much, too. Ra, tell people how they can reach you, sir. Sir. You can call me on the phone. You can stick out your hand in front of you if you're if you're if you're within two or three feet of me. You can stick your hand out, touch me. Yeah, okay, you, can, you can reach me like that. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you call me between one and seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. I don't make concessions, man, because I'm busy outside of those times doing other things that I got scheduled. Yeah. yeah. Honor that. And all uh, 1 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And my number is 516-881-6992. You can follow me on Instagram at Cosmo361. C-O-Z-M-O 361. You go to my website, Cosmo Physics 361. The link is on my IG page. You can follow me here at YouTube. <laughs> Hit the like button. Make a comment. Uh, participate. You dig? Yeah, participate. And, you know, I will respond to the comment that, that magnetizes a response. I'm going to just be honest with you, Meg. I can't answer everybody, but certain comments magnetize 
just pull it right on out. <laughs> stretching my stretching my fucking face. I can't even keep my mouth shut. Okay, I gotta answer that shit. Okay. Yeah, and um, you know, you can find me on Twitter at Raku, you know. Um basically calling me. Calling me between one and seven is the best thing. Understand is that the line is long every day. So if you don't reach me, you should call back because I might be on the phone reading, you know, whoever was there when I answered. All right. So, um, and it's kind of hard for me. So you got to call back, y'all. I'll give you a five minute sample for free. So you understand the weight and magnitude and the accuracy of the science. Cause you know, you call me and I don't know you. I'm gonna tell you some things that people that know you don't know. Five minutes or? You know, so there that goes, okay. Um, I, I teach classes, y'all go check out my site, man. And, and, and go watch my videos on here on YouTube and at IG. All right, and then decide if you wanna study under me because I'm an unconventional instructor. You know, I done had some people with real teaching degrees try to, you know, instruct me on how to waken up their penal brain <laughs> to mathematical Cheers. structure. These <sighs> niggas got degrees in education and, and the math still boggles them, man. And, it's, it, it, <laughs> and it is all eighth grade, New York eighth grade criteria shit, mathematics. But love. We ain't even using we ain't even using algebraic formula. We multiply and subtract and divide, convert the time and, and degrees in the time, y'all. The decimal here and there. Where's Marcus yeah. so he can say his goodbye? Where did he go? Um, I will I will I will accept his honorary degree for him. He has okay, Pisces. He has Pisces. You have Saturn honorary in right. his sun sign. Yeah. So you'll okay. do it. By all means, yeah, please tell people how they can reach Marku. Marku, first of all, I picked up Marku from Buffalo two days ago, and we ain't slept yet, and he worked a really long, hard day. I'm very proud of him for how he's been carrying himself. So make sure you send him some love at your Astro Zone. You know what I'm saying? He's always on Instagram giving very insightful interpretations of how he sees the chart working around him on his day by day, because that is a nigga that walks around outside constantly talking about nothing but the chart. Right. That it drives me crazy sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So if you're interested in the chart, you feel me? Definitely check him out at your Astro Zone. You know what I'm saying? Blood of the legend. So, you know what I'm saying? Legends and, and DNA code in and of itself. So make sure you get with that and you stay tuned. Appreciate it. Oh, one more time, um, Abdullah, can you give me your, um, what is that called? Your can Instagram. Can turn off my screen now? So that I can put it in the chat for everybody before we go. That was N S W B T Y. Yeah, yeah. I type it up for you. N S W B T Y underscore. So that they, yeah. these are Instagram links. I mean Instagram you know, apps yeah. so that everyone can you, find you, that. You, there we you go. know I you know I, I sat there and th all that shit disappeared as you typed it in there. What disappeared? Uh, oh, no, all that shit in there. It all disappeared. A anyway, uh, let me just say this, man. You provoked a very serious thought. You know. I provoked, provoked a very serious thought. No, Nessu Billy Caffrey yeah. provoked a serious yeah. thought. You know, a serious memory of in living color <laughs> with the nigga. Was making fun of conscious people, and he said his name. He said this long African, you know, right. name. So when you was going into your spit, how to spell your name and all that, I was like, man, this is back in the fucking in living <laughs> Oh, bro. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I just had to get that off I'm my black, chest. I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. I'm bliggity black, and I'm black, y'all. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the longest goodbye in world history. Peace, family. Thanks to everybody that joined us.
With long ass goodbye. We had to have to stand up. Stand. No, but seriously, goodbye, family. I love I, we'll y'all. We'll do this again. Peace. I promise. Peace. Three, six, one. <laughs>